I was on my way to Julia's house for a study sesh, when out of nowhere, I found myself flying onto the ground. I was so stunned, I didn't even see the ball that had hit me, or the fact there was a cute guy rushing over to check if I was okay. He helped me up and apologized. Then he pulled a band-aid out of his bag. Oh my, who is he? I'd scraped my hand pretty badly, but I almost didn't mind because now I was face to face with a gorgeous guy. In fact, I was so busy staring at him and blushing that I didn't even notice Julia marching towards us. Um, what are you two doing? Turns out the cute guy was Callum, Julia's boyfriend. Ugh, Julia. Of course, every nice thing is always hers. I'm Jenny, by the way, and that lucky girl is Julia. She's the daughter of the richest guy in town, Mr. Walsh. We're supposed to be friends, but we honestly have nothing in common. I mean, my family is pretty poor. It's not our fault, though. My dad sadly passed away. And so it's just me and my mom trying to make ends meet. Julia, on the other hand, has a silver spoon shoved down her throat. But fate still brought us together. I know it's kind of wrong, but that night I couldn't stop thinking about Callum. He now, in fact, gave me motivation for the next study session with bossy Julia, as maybe he would be there again. I even put on makeup and skipping on the way to her house the next day. But, well, it was all for nothing, because Callum was nowhere to be seen. Instead, I had to sit and listen to Julia go on and on about her trip to Paris. I pretended that I was okay, but actually, I always dreamed of visiting the city of light, and gazing up at the Eiffel Tower ever since watching Emily in Paris. Dream on, Jenny. Anyway, Julia was incessant. She loved making me look like a fool, and even said, Aw, poor Jenny. Maybe one day you'll get to go to Paris. But until then, you can just look at all my photos. Honestly, why was she so cruel to me? Last year around my birthday, she'd even shown me a fashion magazine and asked me which dress I liked best. I thought she was buying gifts for me, but instead... She showed up at my party in the exact dress I pointed out. I couldn't believe it. She just winked at me and laughed, and I seriously wanted to scream at her. Anyway, after looking at about one billion Paris pics, Mr. Walsh appeared. He looked happy to see us sitting so close and studying together. If only he knew the truth. But I had to pretend I had a lot of fun with Julia and helping her study, at least for his sake. Mr. Walsh was a good friend of our family, and ever since my dad passed away, he'd been looking out for me, and was even paying my school fees. I couldn't let him down. But you know what? I actually started to get excited to go over to Julia's now, as the thought of bumping into Callum again gave me butterflies. I even got myself a new hairstyle, but he was never there, and I always left feeling disappointed. Then one time, after school, it started to rain dogs and cats, and I had to run for it. Then suddenly, I felt an umbrella over my head. Guess what? It was Callum coming to the rescue. It was like something out of a romantic movie. He even offered me a lift home. My heart was racing so hard I was afraid he'd hear it. I just sat there in silence dripping rain all over his clean car. I even caught him looking over at me a few times, and my heart felt like it was going to leap out of my chest. He pulled up at my house, so I was about to get out when he touched my arm and said, Can I get your number? I was confused. I mean... Wasn't he Julia's boyfriend? He then explained that he was just hired to be her fake boyfriend so that all the flirty boys would get out of her way. Wow, I couldn't believe it. He asked me to keep it a secret as Julia would end us both if this story got out. Okay, it all made sense now. That's why he never came over to her house. I felt so happy. Over the next few days, Callum and I chatted a lot on the phone. And then eventually, he asked me out on a date. We went to the fun fair, and right away he held my hand. It made me feel so special, and I never wanted him to let go. We were having so much fun, then a familiar voice pierced the air. Well, well, well. Isn't that my dear friend, Jenny? I felt dread rush through my whole body. We turned around, and there was Julia and her girl gang, all standing there with their arms crossed. Callum dropped my hand and rushed to Julia's side. It was all her, babe. You gotta see the messages she sent. She's been flirting with me for weeks. It's pathetic. Whoa, was he for real? A second ago, he was about to lean in for a kiss. And now he was bad-mouthing me? How could he be so two-faced? I tried to explain to Julia, but she wouldn't listen. 
she just called me a traitor in front of everyone and told all her friends to lock up their boyfriends in case I try it on with one of theirs next. I was devastated. Everyone was staring at me and judging me. Ugh, if only I could vanish into thin air right now. And as I was thinking about where I could escape to, a guy appeared, grabbed my wrist, and pulled me away. It was Stefan, the guy who lived across the road from me. I didn't understand why he helped me, but I was so grateful that he did. He walked me home and tried to cheer me up by saying how his mom used to love our bakery so much, and that the carrot cake my mom made was his mom's fave. This made me smile, thinking back on all those happy times in our family bakery. When my dad had died, we'd had to sell it to pay off some debt, and life had become quite difficult. Luckily, Mr. Walsh was helping out, but after what just happened with Julia, I wasn't sure I'd be able to face him. The next day at school, everyone was staring at me. I couldn't even find a place to sit at lunch. What had I done? I'd ruined everything. And then it got worse. My phone beeped. It was Mr. Walsh. He said he was so disappointed in me and that I no longer needed to come and tutor his daughter. I wanted to cry, and at the same time, I felt so much relief. But then I read on, and he said, I'm sorry, but I can't keep my promise anymore. I'll continue to subsidize your school fees, but you'll have to figure something out for college. Good luck. My heart plummeted. Not only had I been shunned by everyone at school and backstabbed by Callum, but now the door to college was being slammed in my face too. What would I do? My life was over. I felt so sick. I just walked out of the canteen and went home. I didn't dare go to school over the next few days. I was miserable. And just when I'd given up all hope, there was a knock at my door. It was Callum. What was he doing here? He said he was sorry for what had happened and that he missed me so much. Then he asked me if I'd be interested in being his secret girlfriend. What in the world? I was so angry, I wanted to slam the door in his face. But he was fast enough to catch my hand, which took me aback. At that exact moment, Stefan happened to walk past. Seeing me standing there with Callum, his face changed and he immediately walked away. Oh, no. I definitely couldn't let him misunderstand anything about me anymore. He's the only friend I had left. I yanked my arm away from Callum and chased after Stefan. I finally caught up with him and blurted out how I'd been feeling like the whole world was against me and that I didn't know what to do. He told me to calm down, then we went to sit on a bench in the park, as he let me confide everything in him. By the time I finished talking, I was on the verge of tears. Then he said, Listen, Jenny, you're better than this. Don't dim to fit in with those people at your school. Good people will see you for the real you. You're strong, and you can get through anything. I know you can. He was right. I was better than this. I didn't need to sink as low as Julia and her friends, and I certainly didn't need to rely on Mr. Walsh's money. I'd figure this out by myself, like I always did. So I applied for a part-time job at a coffee shop. Earning my own money felt so good. Suddenly I felt free, and I knew everything was going to be okay. But then one day when I was working, Julia and her gang came in. They still weren't over what happened, and in front of everyone, they brought up what I'd done to humiliate me. And they even recorded it, and I couldn't stop shaking. This was too much. That's when I threw a cup of coffee all over Julia and ran out of there. Julia shouted after me that she was going to tell my mom everything I'd done. Without a doubt, Julia really did it. She even sent my mom photos of me and Callum at the fair. And well, my mom didn't take it well. I rushed home to try and explain after mom yelled at me over the phone. But then I couldn't find mom anywhere. I called her phone and a man answered. He said my mom was in a hospital after she fainted? Oh dear good God! I got to the hospital immediately and found out that she had collapsed from shock. But thankfully she was okay. She had to stay in the rest of the day to be monitored. So I went to get us both a cup of coffee. That's when I saw him. Callum. He was in the ward next door sitting with some girl. I almost dropped the coffee out of shock. They looked close. I waited until he'd left, and then I went to ask the girl if Callum was her boyfriend. Well, turns out, they'd been dating for two years already. So he was triple cheating? The girl deserved to know the truth, so I took a deep breath and told her everything. She was so upset. We decided to get our own back. So the girl called Callum and asked him to come back. As soon as he arrived, we confronted him and got the truth once and for all. He was never Julia's real boyfriend. 
In fact, here's the shocking part. He was hired by Julia to pretend to date me and ruin my life. Apparently, she was jealous of how much attention her dad gave me since my dad had died, and that her dad constantly compared her to me. He kept apologizing to his girlfriend, saying how much he loved her, and that he only agreed to help Julia so that he could earn some money to help pay for her medical bills. I was stunned. Callum was so apologetic and said he'd come clean about everything. He posted it on the school forum to clear my name and to everyone to see the ugly truth about Julia. And of course, when Mr. Walsh saw it, he made her come and apologize to me. And he also apologized himself and offered to pay my college fees again. Do you think I accepted his offer? Of course not. I was standing on my own feet now, and there was no going back. I didn't need anyone's help. So you might be wondering how I could afford college. Surely not on my coffee shop salary, right? Well, after graduating high school, I realized how much I missed the bakery. That was where I truly felt happy. So I decided to study to become a pastry chef, and now my mom and I have opened a new bakery. I've never been happier, and there's one last thing I want to share. Oh, in fact, here he is. Hey, Stefan, I've made your mom's fave. Let's go surprise her. I couldn't stop smiling as Stefan took the carrot cake, kissed my cheek, and we headed for his car. Life is so much more simple now, and sweet, and I love it. Good night, good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night till it be. Rio de Janeiro. The whole audience burst into laughter. What did I just say? Panicked, I checked the script again. Huh? It did say Rio de Janeiro. Ugh, I know she's behind it. Lisa, she must have messed with my script. Your prob's wondering why I didn't run down to the stands and give her a taste of my shoe? Well, it's complicated. You see, Lisa and I used to be best friends. When I was seven, my family moved to this town and Lisa was my neighbor. Back then, Lisa always seemed lonely, as she didn't have any siblings. Her mom was busy with work and her dad was away on business. So I often came over to hang out with her and eventually we became the best of friends. We had so many things in common. Oh, and even her dad was a cop, just like my dad. Lisa never mentioned him, but I know she missed him. But then our 10 years of friendship was recently ruined, just because of some boy. You see, Lisa liked this guy called Brent at school. So being the great friend I am, I tried to help. But Lisa found out that he'd been messaging me and thought that I was flirting with him behind her back. I tried to explain many times, but she refused to listen. So now, I became her reluctant enemy. Her sneaky tricks became commonplace. And on this occasion, she won. As she got the role of Juliet, while I was just a boring maid. On the day of the play, after finishing the final rehearsal, Lisa suddenly walked up to me and smiled. Sorry about the audition. I've been thinking about it a lot and realized how childish I was. Then Lisa handed me a bottle of my favorite juice to make up. Okay, that's strange. Does she have two completely different personalities inside her or something? Or did she realize how great of a friend I am not to resent her petty tricks? Anyways, seeing as it was her birthday and all, I happily took the bottle of juice and wished her good luck. However, 15 minutes before the performance, I had the worst cramping pains in my stomach. I sprinted at rocket speed to the bathroom, and by the time I got out of there, the show was pretty much over. And guess what? I hadn't had anything that day, except for the juice Lisa gave me. Unbelievable! She did it to me again! I then rushed into the lounge of the drama club and rummaged through Lisa's bag. Bingo! Inside was a bottle of laxatives. She put it in my drink so I couldn't participate in the show. Ex-best friend or whatever, there's no way I'm gonna let her get away with it this time. Then suddenly, I found a vintage pocket watch sticking out from the innermost compartment of her bag. I held it in my hand and saw that the number 1999 was engraved on it. Why did it look so familiar? Don't touch my father's belongings! A voice sounded from behind me, and the next thing I knew, Lisa snatched the pocket watch from my hand. Why was she angry? I mean, I was the one who got done over, not her. And also... What did she mean by her father? I was still thinking about it when I arrived home and suddenly saw someone sneaking around outside Lisa's house. 
Isn't that... Dad? My dad looked around and then placed a beautifully wrapped gift in front of her door. It must be Lisa's birthday present, but why didn't he just hand it to her directly? When my dad came back inside, I quickly rushed over to him and asked, Hey dad, do you remember the pocket watch that you love so much? I haven't seen it for a while. Where did you put it? Dad seemed to be flustered by my question. Then he muttered that he'd sold the watch to a pawn shop. I just nodded, but I knew he was lying, as he treasured that watch too much to ever sell it. Why did he give it to Lisa, then lie to me? Could it be that Lisa is my dad's illegitimate daughter? And the fact that my dad insisted on moving here, was it just so he could be close to his mistress and his child? Ugh! Lisa had stolen my role, and now she wanted to take my dad away from me too. I'd had enough. It's time for me to give her a taste of her own medicine. The next day at school, I made sure Lisa was watching as I flirted with Brent, then linked arms with him. <laughs> she looked like she was going to explode with anger. Then I told everybody in class that Lisa's father wasn't away on business, and that she only said this as he had another family and abandoned her when she was little. The rumors must have gotten back to Lisa, as the next thing I knew, she was confronting me as I walked out of the toilet cubicle. How dare you say that stuff about my dad? You're a horrible liar! Then we ended up in a nasty hair-tugging fight. It was so bad, a teacher had to come in and pull us apart. Then the principal called our parents. Luckily for us, my dad and Lisa's mom decided not to make this a big deal because of our close neighborly relations. Yeah. As if. However, my dad still made me apologize to Lisa and her mom. Ugh. Dad, why do I have to apologize? It's not like she apologized to me for putting laxatives in my drink. You were wrong to spread those untrue rumors about her. But what were the laxatives about? I thought you two were friends. Since when did you guys become this resentful towards each other? I wasn't lying. They're the truth. Are you defending Lisa over me just because you feel guilty that she's your secret daughter? Kirsty, what did you say? I explained how I knew about the watch and therefore I'd figured out his secret. He was silent for a long time, then sighed and said, Actually, Lisa's dad was a colleague of mine. He was a good man who worked hard at his job. We had this difficult case involving a notorious criminal gang and, unfortunately... <laughs> Her dad passed away while on duty. In his last moments, he gave me his pocket watch as a memento and asked me to look after his four-year-old daughter, Lisa. Her mom and I couldn't break the heart of that little girl, so we said her father was away from home on business and would return when she'd be 18 years old. As for me, I would pretend to be her father to occasionally send gifts and letters to her. When you and Lisa were seven, I decided to move here in order to easily take care of her. And as you know, I gave her that pocket watch, her father's last memento. But why did you lie to her like that? Lisa was too young at that time to accept such an ugly truth. Her mom and I didn't have much choice either. I was expecting her to get used to it and stop waiting for her dad, but it's true that we didn't expect things to be like this. On her last birthday, I continued to play the role of her father and left a present at the door with an apology for not being able to come home due to a busy schedule. But we know we can't keep this from her anymore. It's heartbreaking to see her longing for her dad so persistently. So, it turned out that all my speculations were wrong. Not only that, but I also spread false rumors and hurt my friend. Oh God, what had I done? How could I put this right? That night, I sent Lisa a long text apologizing but she didn't reply. So the next morning, I waited at her door to go to school together, but she just walked straight past me. Looking at her distraught face, my heart filled with remorse. I just entered the school gate when someone tapped me on the shoulder. Wanna go see a play with me tonight? Brent held out two theater tickets. Oh, it was for the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime. I was desperate to see that. Back when Lisa and I were still friends, we talked about going to see it. Wait, Lisa. That's right. So, I lied to Brent that I was busy and told him to ask Lisa to go with him instead. 
Lisa looked so thrilled that Brent had asked her out. <sighs> now my conscience was clear. Lisa and Brent would realize they liked each other and finally get together properly. Then she'd forgive me, right? Anyway, I did have an essay coming up, so I went to a quiet coffee shop and studied there till late. But when I got home, I walked through the door to smashed up ornaments and the sound of my parents arguing. So you've been lying to me and Kirsty for all these years? How could you have a secret child the same age as your daughter? Aren't you ashamed of yourself? What's going on? Did she know about Lisa? I quickly ran to stop her. Mom, it's not what you think. I thought so too at first. But you have to listen to Dad. Those lies may fool you, but they can't fool me. Lisa is his illegitimate daughter. That poor girl came here and told me. I tried reasoning with Mom, but she was too upset to listen. With a slam of the door, she left. Dad plopped down on the couch and gave a solemn sigh. I sat next to him, comforting him that maybe it was Lisa's misunderstanding. Dad, we have to tell Lisa the truth. I'll approach her first to test the water, and then when she seems to be emotionally stable, you will come and talk to her, okay? The next day, as soon as I arrived at school, I immediately went to look for Lisa. There she was, standing by her locker with her arms folded. I walked over to her, but before I could say anything, she shouted, Stop acting as if you're that noble! I know Brent only invited me to the theater because you told him to. Why do you wish to embarrass me so much? Then Lisa burst into tears. If my dad was still alive, he would protect me from mean girls like you! I gaped at Lisa. She already knew everything? But if so... Why did she tell my mom the day before that my dad was also her dad? I stood there, refused to move until she told me the truth. Eventually, she blurted out that on her 18th birthday, she saw my dad leaving a gift in front of her house. Suspecting something was up, she mustered up the courage to ask her mom everything. It devastated her to learn that her long-awaited dad was just totally a made-up lie by my dad. She was full of rage towards my dad and me, so she lied to my mom so we'd know what it felt like to have a broken family. I was furious. How dare she do this to my family? But as she sobbed out an apology, my anger faded right away, and I only felt so sorry for her instead. What she had gone through was really unbearable. I hugged her tightly and the pair of us cried our eyes out. When we both calmed down, we decided to have a frank talk with our families. I told Lisa I didn't mind sharing my dad with her, as he loves her like his own daughter anyway. But in return, Lisa needed to apologize to my mom and explain everything to her so she'd come back home. So finally, my mom has returned, and our two families are at peace again. I'm so sorry. I was out of my mind. I didn't mean to hurt you, Mom. I mean, Mrs. Lamont. Everyone burst out laughing. I also took the opportunity to give Lisa's mom a big hug and called her my mom, just like Lisa did. We were all chatting away happily when the doorbell rang. Lisa and I both went to open the door and saw Brent standing there holding a bouquet of flowers. He had this bewildered look on upon seeing us both here. But you know what? It doesn't matter which one of us he was looking for. There's no need for a boyfriend right now, because I already have my best friend right here. Or, should I say, my sister? <laughs> I walked into the cafeteria and gulped. The only free seat was next to Joanna, one of the weirdest girls in school. She was always sitting alone, and usually I'd avoid her because people said she didn't speak much and was totally shy. But somehow, I felt kind of sorry for her. I mean, how bad could it be? Well, famous last words. It was bad. I sat down with a smile, but she just glared at me and grunted, Go on then, throw me your worst insult. I was confused and said, Oh, no, I, I just wanted to sit here and say hi. Are you okay? Suddenly, Joanna started speaking at a million miles per hour, telling me that of course she wasn't okay, 
and that she had to see a therapist every day. Then she showed me all the pills she had to take and said she had crippling anxiety. I was shocked. Overwhelmed with TMI, I felt uncomfortable and thought of leaving, but then she grabbed my hand and said, We're friends now, right? I've never had a friend in my life before. You're the first person I've really been able to open up to. Not even my parents know how hard it is for me. Whoa, I couldn't leave her now. I patted on her shoulder and told her I'd happily be her friend. I mean, it would just be spending some lunch together or grabbing a coffee at most. It'd be fine. However, Joanna's interpretation of a friend was slightly different from mine. Three days later, I got back from the library quite late, so I went straight to my room as usual and started changing, only to find Joanna right behind me as I turned around. I almost woke up the whole building with a scream of fright. Oh, hey, Rumi, she said with a big grin. What? This was insane. Um, Rumi? What do you mean? But she just laughed and said she'd felt very lonely in her dorm on her own, and seeing as I had a double room, she'd asked the dorm supervisor if she could move in with me. I guess it wasn't so bad. I mean, I got lonely too sometimes. So that night, we stayed up super late chatting. And to be honest, it was actually nice to have a roomie. We became quite close. And a few nights later, we were having a movie night. Joanna turned to me and said, Carrie, there's something I need to tell you. Oh no. Surely there wasn't any more disturbing things left. How did this girl cope? But then she started blushing and said, I have a crush on someone. His name is Mitch. Oh gosh, I knew exactly who she was talking about. Joanna, he's bad news. He's a total womanizer. You're way too good for him. At least, that's what I said, but what I meant was that he was only into popular girls. He'd never go for a girl like Joanna. Joanna didn't take it well. You're jealous, aren't you? I bet you have a crush on him too. Well, I confess, so he's mine. Huh, <laughs> you're welcome to him. I never fancy someone like Mitch. I'm not that kind of girl. Joanna then said she'd prove to me that she could win him over. I felt annoyed at her and just went back to watching the movie. For a second there, it felt like my life had way more drama than ever before, and I started regretting ever sitting at her table that day. Little did I know, it was just the beginning. A week later, I was hit in the face by a huge surprise. Joanna and Mitch started dating. I was lying there listening to music when I heard voices outside the door. I opened it, and there was Mitch walking off. He turned back to blow Joanna a kiss, and then you should have seen the smug expression on her face. Told ya, she said, laughing. Wow, cocky. But okay, I was happy for her. She was a woman of her word, but I was worried she'd get hurt. I didn't have time to tell her this, though, because pretty soon she was with him 24-7. He even came over to our dorm, and I was sick of listening to them kissing. They were disgustingly lovey-dovey all the time, and it quickly became exhausting. On Valentine's Day, he sent 100 balloons to our dorm, and I couldn't even get through the door. Could he be any more over the top? It wasn't even that romantic. But Joanna was smitten. It was painful to watch. But... Not as painful as seeing Mitch walking along the street holding some other girl's hand. I froze. This couldn't be. I quickly text Joanna asking her how things were going between her and Mitch. She replied immediately saying, all good, why? So I told her what I'd seen, but I got no reply. I rushed back to her dorm and asked her why she was ignoring me and if she was okay. But she just started shouting at me saying I was trying to ruin her relationship because I was jealous. Clearly, she didn't believe me. I told her I was telling the truth, but she just got up and left, slamming the door behind her. Things got really awkward after that. She ignored me in the dorm, ignored me in class, and wouldn't reply to any of my texts. 
and she still brought Mitch back to our room and kissed him in front of me. Eventually, I couldn't take it anymore and asked her to move out. But I didn't expect what would happen next. Joanna lost it. She started shouting, What's your problem? For the first time in my life, I'm happy, and someone loves me. And there you are, trying to ruin this for me. And now you want to kick me out? It's not my fault you're single, Carrie. Maybe if you stopped being so jealous for a second, someone would like you back. I couldn't believe her. I wanted to scream. She was the worst. And the next morning, it got even worse. I was sitting with some friends before class started when suddenly Joanna walked in and burst into tears. People ran over to her and asked if she was okay, and that's when my blood ran cold. She started saying how I'd been badmouthing her boyfriend, and now I wanted to kick her out of our dorm. And then I heard my voice. I looked over, and she had her phone out and was playing a recording of our argument. Of course, she'd edited it to make me sound like the bad guy. Even my friends looked shocked, and Joanna told them all how I was a two-faced, good-for-nothing kind of girl and that I loved to gossip about everyone behind their backs. I tried to explain to everyone that Joanna was lying and that she was just angry, but everyone looked at me in shock. It was like they believed her. I was stunned. The next day, I noticed Joanna showing my friends some photos on her phone. They were screenshots of texts for me, but she'd edited them to create a total monster out of me. One time, Joanna had messaged me laughing about how my friend Valerie had the worst hairstyle ever, and I joked that she must have cut it by herself. And there was the message where Joanna talked about how Mitch said his ex, Anna, who was also our class president, must have been flirting with the economics teacher to get good grades. And I said, has Anna sunk that low? Not only having an affair with a married man, but basically committing academic fraud? I don't think she would do that, though. But of course, Joanna had cropped out the last sentence, and she didn't show her parts in the conversation either. By that way, I looked like the worst friend ever. I tried to tell them what Joanna was doing, but they were too hurt to believe me. But that's not all. You see... Joanna had sent these messages to the whole school. For the rest of the day, people were coming up to me and telling me I was nothing but a mean girl. And then at lunch, I went to sit in my usual spot with my friends, and suddenly they all jumped up and left me there alone. I could hear everyone whispering about me. And then the most popular girl, Amy, came over to me and said I was a disappointment to this college, and I didn't even deserve to be here. I couldn't hold back my tears, so I rushed back to my dorm. But standing there with her arms folded, blocking the door was the dorm supervisor. She said that she'd received reports about my behavior and that I had one week to move out of the dorm. I didn't understand. What had I done? Apparently, people had told her I wanted to get her fired. And then I remembered Joanna saying those exact words and asked me how she could report to the manager, so I'd sent her a text explaining how to report her. Oh my gosh, she'd even used that against me? This was too much. I went to find Joanna. I was furious. She was ruining my life. When I got to class, I planned to show everyone our full chat conversations, unedited. But I didn't get the chance because Joanna was sobbing hysterically and everyone was comforting her. She was saying how living with me was torture, and that she had to take medication to deal with me. Enough! How dare you! I screamed. Why are you doing this to me? What did I ever do to you? Joanna, of course, started crying even louder, and everyone stared at me like they wanted to kill me. I walked out of there feeling completely empty. I'd lost my friends, my dorm, my reputation, and every last bit of dignity, all because of that snake. I still didn't know what I'd done wrong. The more I tried to understand it, the more everyone defended Joanna. It was useless. No one listened to me. Eventually, I ignored them all, moved out of the dorm, and acted like Joanna didn't exist. Fortunately, 
I made some new friends that loved and trusted me and never twisted my words. As for gossiping about me that everyone else still did, I learned to block it out. And then about four months later, I got an email from Joanna. I was shocked. She said, Carrie, I'm sorry. You were right all along. Mitch was cheating on me, and I should have listened to you. Please forgive me. I'm begging you. I'll do anything to make it up to you. I'll confess to everyone. Please, let's just be friends again. I miss you. Ha! Huh, not in a million years. I deleted the email right away. There was nothing that she could do to ever make it up to me. She'd ruined my life, and I was done with that toxicity. Good riddance. Hey guys, I'm Feather, and I look just like any other 16-year-old, right? Actually, my life as a teenager is far from ordinary since I have hemophilia, a rare disease in which my blood doesn't clot properly, so even a simple graze could be fatal. My parents are so worried that I might hurt myself that they keep me safely shut away in this mansion. In fact, I've never left it. Money isn't a problem to them as they own this massive energy corporation, so to compensate for me not being able to go outside, they make sure I get anything I ask for. My giant playroom is cool, right? Not only that, but I also own a dressing room with hundreds of cute Lolita outfits and an enormous pantry full of my favorite snacks that I can enjoy at any time. You see, there's honestly nothing to complain about, except I suppose it does get a bit lonely sometimes. Until one morning, I was woken up by a screeching noise coming from downstairs. Are you kidding me? Do you want to burn my throat with this or what? What's going on here? I went over to the living room and was stunned to see a girl sitting way too comfortably on our couch. I was still trying to figure out who she was when she suddenly said, You, standing at the door, get me another glass of cool water. Now. Taken aback, I instinctively went to get her water. Then the girl finally looked up and seemed startled to see me. Oh my, I'm terribly sorry. I thought you were just one of the maids. Turns out she's Katie, the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Forger, the two scientists that are collaborating with our family's corporation. My parents arranged for them to stay here to facilitate the research on the upcoming project. When I told her about my life and condition, she seemed really surprised. Oh, Feather, it's as if you live in your own tiny world. There are already flying cars out there, and they've just invented time machines too. You're missing out on so much. Really? How come no one told me about this? <laughs> I'm just joking, silly. Whoa, you weren't kidding about not leaving this place, were you? Then she started telling me about some of her favorite things to do in the outside world, such as watching the latest movies in the cinema, going to the mall where she could actually try things on before buying them, or attending all the fun festivals. It all sounds so cool. We chatted for ages, then I showed Katie around the mansion. Her reaction when seeing my dressing room and the playroom was seriously priceless. <laughs> From then on, I spent lots of time with Katie, but my favorite part about being around her were her stories about school, where she got to learn new things and make a lot of friends. Seeing my excited expression, Katie immediately suggested that I talk to my parents about maybe letting me experience it myself. Actually, it doesn't hurt to try, right? So at dinner, I gathered my courage to say, Mom, Dad, I want to go to school. I understand that you're worried for me, so Katie will come along to protect me. Right, Katie? Oh, yes, that's right. Feather is in good hands, Mr. and Mrs. Adams. My parents seemed very hesitant, but after a whole lot of persuading, they finally agreed with conditions. We'll join the most prestigious school in the state and have our own chauffeur. As for Katie, to avoid any incidents occurring, I suggest you get rid of the long nails and jewelry, Katie. We went back to my room after dinner, and I just couldn't hide my excitement. Yes, we'll get to go to school together soon. What should I prepare? What would you recommend? But then I noticed Katie staring in sorrow at her newly done set of nails. I'm so sorry, Katie. Is there anything I can do to make it up to you? It's okay, Feather. What matters is that you're able to go to school, and I'm so happy for you. It's bedtime anyways. I'll head back to my room now. I'm so lucky to have a friend like her. As I was indulging in my thoughts, a familiar voice startled me. Hey, I heard you two are going to school. Are you sure it's safe? Katie doesn't seem all that trustworthy. That is none of your business. You're just jealous that I've made a new friend while you're still lonely, aren't you? In case you're wondering, this guy is Liam, the butler's son. 
He was my childhood best friend and used to come to the mansion every day for homeschooling and to spend time with me. But we had some petty argument and I hadn't seen him since. Well, at least not until now. He was about to ramble about something else, but I slammed the door in his face. I wasn't going to let him ruin my mood. What I need to think about is my school day that's coming up. Oh my, it's so exciting. I really can't wait. Ah, we are going to Edgewood High today. So I decided to wear my favorite Lolita dress as Katie suggested. Oh, I almost forgot, Mr. Freddy. He's been my best friend since childhood, and of course he had to come along with me on this big day. Katie also said I should try introducing him to everyone. That would help me make new friends faster. Such a brilliant idea. Whoa, we're finally here. Hey, Katie, how do we find our lockers? Hey, Katie, when is lunch? Hey, Katie, do you know who's going to teach us? Oh my god, Feather, stop asking. Everyone's staring. Uh, I didn't even notice. It's probably because we're new. Hi, I'm Feather. Or maybe it's because of your extravagant outfit. Before I could say anything, someone spoke up. That's a lovely dress. Oh, you're right. They do seem to like my dress. <laughs> I waited for everyone in the room to settle, then confidently introduced myself. Hi, everyone. I'm Feather, and this is my best friend, Mr. Freddy. As soon as they saw Mr. Freddy, everyone burst out laughing. I didn't know what was so funny, so I just awkwardly laughed along. After class, I asked Katie why our classmates laughed earlier, and what she told me was unbelievable. They were making fun of me. It's so sad to know, but I guess not everyone can be as nice as Katie. She also told me to dress down next time to attract less unwanted attention. It's a bit upsetting, but I guess I'll have to do what's best. So I listened to Katie's advice and ditched the OTT dress. Just like she said, people actually stopped staring at me. Here, hold this. You look really good holding books. Huh? That sounds kind of weird. But it's fine, though. She probably wanted my help but was just too shy to ask. After the morning classes, I went to buy a bunch of lollipops, and that might look odd to Katie, so I let her know about how lollies are my special anxiety remedy. People here seem to be quite judgy, which got me a bit uneasy. You want one? Aw, poor you, but no thanks. By the way, I'll have lunch with David today, you know, the cute jock in our math class. So you're on your own this noon, okay? Then she quickly left without waiting for my response. I didn't know having lunch alone was so boring. Everyone has their own group, except for this one guy wearing a hoodie and a mask. H hi can I join you? But he didn't even reply, just stood up and moved to another seat. Did, did I do something wrong? Feeling the anxiety taking over, I immediately took a lollipop to calm myself down. And it's doing a wonderful job at making me feel better. But suddenly, someone snatched it out of my hand. I chased after him, but slipped on someone's foot and fell hard on the floor. Panicked, I burst out crying, and I heard the guy that took my candy say, Huh, huh, feather the toddler. Then everyone laughed at me again. Luckily, a guy spoke up. Stop this nonsense. What are you going to do if she's injured? Oh, wait, it's the weird guy from lunch. He checked on me to make sure everything was fine, then quietly went back to his seat. I didn't even have the chance to ask for his name before the teacher came in. This guy was so strange, but there was one thing I didn't understand. Why was Katie also laughing? Back home, Katie came to find me in the playroom, and I questioned her about the incident earlier, and she quickly apologized as she thought they were just joking. She then suggested going shopping and offered to buy me something to cheer me up, and so I agreed immediately. We went to the mall the next morning, and I had the best time. We had iced coffee and some delicious pudding. Katie also got me an adorable little hair clip, and so I bought her a bunch of new clothes in return. We were about to head home when Katie said, Hey, Feather, um, I have a cousin whose sneakers are falling apart. Would it be okay if you helped me get him a new pair? Of course, anything for my best friend. Making my best friend happy was the most wonderful feeling in the world. I'm so grateful to have such a lovely person like her to come into my life. But then the next day, I walked into class to see Katie being all lovey-dovey with the boy who took my lollipop. So that's the David that she mentioned, and on his feet were the brand new sneakers that were supposed to be for her cousin. Why is he wearing the shoes I bought? Then Katie pulled me outside and explained profusely, Feather, calm down. The, the shoes were too big for my cousin, so I gave them to David. I didn't lie to you, I promise. Fine. Please just don't let me see him wearing them again. I felt really bad since Katie seemed really sad after hearing what I said. At that moment, David approached me. What's up, toddler? You got a problem with my new kicks? I froze in fear. Then, thankfully, an announcement came through the speaker. David Peterson, please come to the principal's office immediately. 
Turns out he's in trouble for spray painting a teacher's car. At least someone already helped me teach him a lesson, but that wasn't all. A few more of my classmates also got detention for cheating on the math quiz yesterday, while some others got caught skipping classes. It was such a crazy morning. It's as if someone was trying to play the hero here. Finally, it's lunch break. Hoped things would be better in the afternoon, but... Huh? What is this? A poster of me? It also says underneath, Feather the toddler is the snitch. Katie took a look at it and said that the best way to deal with these kinds of jokes was just to play along. Um, I'm not sure about that, but it seems like the only way now. And so, I climbed on an empty chair in the cafeteria and started speaking loud and clear. Mm, may I have everyone's attention, please? Hi, I am Feather the Toddler, and I am proud of it. Instead of getting the response I'd hoped for, what I got back was food. The whole cafeteria was laughing and throwing food at me. I covered my face, trying to dodge it, but the floor got slippery from all the greasy food, so I ended up falling. Oh no! I scratched myself! I could only lay on the ground out of pain. People finally stopped as they saw me bleed. All I could vaguely hear was a familiar voice calling my name. I woke up in the hospital to find Liam sitting next to me. Feather, you're awake. Do you feel pain anywhere? Well, Liam? Why are you here? Where's Katie? Katie? You're still worried about Katie? She's the one who was behind all this. She told the principal about your classmates and told everyone it was you to make them hate you. What? How is that possible? Turns out the guy who was always wearing a hoodie and mask was Liam. Liam had always been suspecting something shady in Katie's behavior. So, after failing in warning me about her, he decided to look out for me himself instead. I cried and tried to hug him despite the pain on my arm. Then Liam showed me a shocking video of Katie talking trash about me to everyone. Oh, why was Feather carrying my books, you ask? It's because her parents work for my family's corporation and she'll do anything I tell her to as long as I give her some money. <laughs> Seeing the anger and also disappointment in my eyes, Liam calmed me down and said he had a plan to expose my so-called best friend. When I returned to school a few days later, I stormed straight over to Katie. It's you! You're behind it all! I already know everything. <laughs> Stop being ridiculous, Feather. You got busted and now you're trying to blame me. Drop the act. No one's falling for it. At the end of class, Katie suddenly gathered everyone. People, head over to the lecture hall. I have something very interesting to show you guys. Oh boy, I wonder what else she has planned. Liam and I quickly followed the crowd and found Katie standing on stage. Oh, Feather, I'm glad you're here. This is about you after all. The screen started playing a video of me sitting on my swing, playing with my dolls, and taking armfuls of candy out of the pantry. Do you see that, everyone? Feather is just a toddler in a teenager's body. Such a weirdo. I was waiting for everyone to start laughing, but the crowd stayed completely silent. Then Katie hesitantly continued, Not only that, she's also the poser who snitched on us. Then, to her surprise, the angry crowd started booing and shouting at Katie, saying she is the evil snitch. Then they turned to me. Your rooms are actually pretty cool. I wish I had a snack pantry like that. It's so awesome. Katie sounded panicked as she continued talking more trash stuff about me, but no one listened. Turns out, Liam had set up a group chat in which he'd posted proof of Katie's actions, including the video of her talking to David, and also pictures of her coyly walking out of the principal's office after she must have snitched on everyone, and her putting up that mean poster about me. Katie, you're the one embarrassing yourself. Everyone knows that you're a snake in the grass. I trusted you, and what I get back are all these lies and schemes. I feel so ashamed for ever calling you a friend. As Katie looked around at the unimpressed-looking crowd, she realized her game was up and quickly fled the scene. Later on, we arrived home to see my angry-looking parents standing next to Katie's mom and dad, who had all their luggage packed ready to move out. Yes, Liam had already told them everything. In the end, Katie's parents made her apologize to me. Only after a lot of persuading did my parents let them keep their jobs. I never saw Katie again, but I did make a bunch of new friends that I invite around sometimes. The snack pantry is a big hit. <laughs> Now, I wear whatever I like without worrying about being judged. Most of all, I'm enjoying my school life, and it's all thanks to the help of my trusty soulmate, Liam. Ah, uh, here it is. Thank God I found it when I did. Cosmic Jess? Who's Jess? I'm Jen. You're Cosmic Jess, admin of the Secret Astrology Mailbox. Quit the act. I know it's you. 
I've read your notebook. Your astrological analyses are incredible. You sure did your homework on the boys I told you I want to conquer. You're my idol. Huh? Oh, turns out our hot girl Kira here, she's the weird girl who asked me, or should I say, my alias Cosmic Jess, to help her flirt with guys. Ugh, but out of all people, why does it have to be her who found out about my identity? She knew too much. Let's be friends, okay? I'll keep your secret. I swear. Okay, but no one can ever know about this. Secret friendship. I get it. Was it a friend request or a contract? I shouldn't be friends with the resident hot girl, but it seems like I didn't have much choice. If anyone finds out that I'm Cosmic Jess, then I'll be kicked out of the astrology admin group. Hey, are you blind or something? Can't you see the road? I picked up my books in silence. It's best if I don't get involved with this attention seeker. I was about to leave when... Rebecca grabbed my hand. You can't just leave. You broke my new iPhone screen. So I want to know what you're going to do about it. Is your head just for decoration or what? As you're acting like a brainless brat. What are you looking at? Don't you know who I am? And why are you rolling your eyes? Kira didn't stop there. By the time she'd finished taunting Rebecca, she caused her to run off crying. Then Kira winked at me and walked off. Hmm. A famous cute Leo wants to be my friend. I guess that's not a bad thing, right? Beneath her competitive and brash exterior, Kira is actually a warm and optimistic girl. No surprise, though, as Leos are extremely dedicated and sincere. She even gave me this beautiful white dress, just because she said it'd compliment my skin tone. Oh no! Now I've ruined it! Stupid ketchup bottle! I rushed to the bathroom to try and fix it. Jasmine, give me the soap bar! SOS! Here! Oh my god, what? Through the curtains, I saw the silhouette of a tall boy showering. You should stop breaking into the bathroom like that. We have a new tenant, he... Wait! Can I please finish up here before we have formal introductions? Jasmine apologized to him, then dragged me out of there. Turns out that's Mark, my older brother David's classmate, and he would be staying with us while he completed his internship. Mark walked out of the shower not long after that, and oh my god, he was gorgeous. Look at that sun-kissed skin, lean muscles and bright smile. Mmm, thank you, universe. He introduced himself, but my ears were ringing, and I couldn't hear a thing. Cupid had hit me. He even helped me clean up the ketchup all over the kitchen carpet and floor. What a nice guy. Then when the coast was clear, I snuck into David's room and rummaged around, trying to find some more info about this hot friend of his. There it was. Mark was born on May 22nd. So he's a Gemini, a perfect gift for an Aquarius girl. I went to school with a spring in my step. Oh, what a glorious day! I hurriedly lined up as I heard the coach's whistle. News on the grapevine was that we had a very handsome new basketball coach. Oh, come on, how could a coach be handsome? But, <gasps> oh my gosh, that's unbelievable. Mark the dreamy Gemini guy from my house, was also my new coach. What more proof did I need that this was destiny? <sighs> After school, I was about to tell Kira about my destiny when she gave me info about her new target, a Taurus boy. This was the second time in a month. I was about to lecture her, but then she bribed me with the new Jan Spiller book. So, I took a look at their birth charts. Hmm, interesting. After so many mismatched attempts, Kira may have found her perfect match. But after a week of trying to impress this guy, Kira failed miserably. This Taurus guy doesn't like my enthusiasm. I just don't get it. I've shown him how kind I am by helping people out, 
and I even changed my style for him. I actually tried on this vintage knee-length dress that smelt like mothballs, and he didn't glance at me once. Let me check. I just don't understand how it can be wrong. Okay, let me go get some snacks. I recalculated and redrew the chart, but still couldn't figure it out. Maybe he already had a girlfriend? Or perhaps he wasn't into girls? <sighs> In this case, I couldn't help at all. Just had to close this Leo Taurus case and open up the Aquarius Gemini love story. I flipped through my chart and Mark's. We matched perfectly. And I just drew hearts around the picture of him glued on it. Ah! I have shocking news, Jen! Kira's piercing scream startled me. Why the hell is the gym teacher downstairs in your house talking to Jasmine? Oh, he's staying in David's room for a while. What? Why didn't you tell me that hot news? Wait, what's in your notebook? Don't tell me it's Mark, okay? I quickly turned around to get the notebook, but Kira was faster. So, you also like Mark. That's why you gave me the advice to be an idiot in front of him, right? Huh? Your Taurus guy is Mark? Of course, I didn't know that. I mean, he's not even a Taurus. Yes, he is. But you knew this. Now you're trying to trick me with your false info so you can find out more about him. If you want, I'll leave him to you. I'm not that needy. Not like you. Unbelievable! Do you really think you would have been able to pick those ex-boyfriends of yours up without my advice? Duh! I'm a beauty queen! You're just helping me speed things up! Beautiful, but boring. The personality that won over all those guys was built by me. That's not who you are. Boring? How dare you! I'll show you just how far from boring I am! Kira then left. Okay, fine. She's living in La La Land about herself. Talk about delusional. Poof, I don't need such an unreasonable friend. At the same time, I received a ton of notifications from the secret mailbox. Oh no, my pictures and info were leaked all over the forum. I quickly logged into the administrator account. Ugh, anonymity was the number one rule of the group. So now they'd kicked me out. My favorite job. My fans. Kira, this was too much. Fine. You want to play dirty? I'll show you dirty. It's time Kira's long list of boyfriends went public on the school forum. Kira the Omnivore was the new nickname that students gave her. Oh well. It was her fault for flirting with 11, no, 12 guys in just half a year. Was she trying to find a boyfriend from each of the 12 zodiac signs or something? Let's end this stuff. It's because of Mark, right? He'll never have him. He's mine. Fine. If you can win his heart in a month, then I'll apologize for lying about your boyfriend collection. If not, you have to write a post claiming that I'm not Jess. Okay. Mark your own words. Kira is a competitive girl. But in this fight, I would definitely win. I mean, come on. She couldn't even get Mark's star sign right. Even though she's a terrible cook, Kira still tried to send some disgusting cakes that she made to my house for him. But of course, Mark threw them in the trash after the first bite. She also feigned feeling faint and fell into his arms in every basketball lesson. Huh. Mark looked so uncomfortable. Not surprising, really seeing as he's 100% Gemini, not Taurus, so her fragile girl act wouldn't work on him. As for my relationship with him, well, that was coming along nicely. And thanks to our assigned star signs, all I had to do was just be myself. For instance, the other night, when I just happened to mention there was a shooting star, he enthusiastically made me and Jasmine go along and watch it. Then last weekend, he invited me and her to a friend's farm which was so much fun. I saw the cute looks he was giving me. So if Jazz hadn't been there, he definitely would have confessed his love to me. And it was true that I didn't have to wait long, as that night, I suddenly heard a knock on my door. How sweet! He'd left a movie ticket for me. Ha! Huh. Take that, Q!
Kira. I knew I'd won this one. I'm so gonna take a picture of us holding hands in the cinema and send it to Kira. The night after, I didn't see Mark at home, so I guess he wanted me to meet him at the movies? Ugh, this was so romantic. Hmm, I was in the right seat, but he wasn't here yet. My heart was beating so fast that I thought it would explode. As the movie started, the lights went out, and that's when someone was approaching my row of seats. I nervously pretended to be staring at the screen when he came to sit next to me. Why are you here? Huh? More like, what are you doing here? The two of us watched the whole film together in anger and impatience. Who on earth arranged all of this? We huffed our way out of the cinema, then spotted Mark. Only, he was holding hands with a girl. Jasmine? We chased after them, but Jasmine just shrugged and smiled. So, all this time, he'd been trying to win Jasmine's heart, not mine. Then he walked over to us and handed me his card. Go get yourself some ice cream. Pizza. Anything. Have fun. I'll be back with Jasmine later. What was that about? I looked at the credit card and gasped when I saw Timon's signature in the corner. How could I forget Geminis have multiple personalities? Timon was the founder of the Astrological Mailbox. Who would have thought that the leader of this group would be a teacher? Someone I lived with? My sister's boyfriend? My crush? And even my bestie's crush? Kira gave me a comforting look. Now we were both lovelorn, but in true Leo style, Kira had already lined up her next prey. Don't be sad. It's just another test. What zodiac sign do you think that guy is? He's pretty good looking, so he must be a Libra, right? I chuckled, then leaned my head on her shoulder. Mark, or should I say Timon, made me realize that before I can hope to find my dream match, I need to make some mistakes first. I may not have found love, but I did have my friend back, so that counted for something, right? <sighs> At least the test of friendship worked. 98, 99, one more to go! And 200,000 followers! <laughs> it looks like I'm making quite an impression on the world. Hey, you're looking at the hottest beauty and lifestyle influencer of Park Springs High School. Beauty and brains? I have both. <laughs> it's not surprising, is it? Obviously, a girl like me gets loads of attention. Oh, there are Nerdy Benes, my number one fanboy. He's always following me around school and offering to help me with, well, everything. I can't blame him. I mean, I'm basically his queen. Hey, Ben. I didn't see you at my locker as usual. Are you... good? I... I'm out of money today, so... Wait, Ben. Don't say it like that. People will think I mugged you or something. I never ask for those groceries or sundries. Yes, you don't. Um, sorry. Okay, so that was weird. Then things got even stranger when I overheard Christine telling her friends that after being exposed, an anonymous IG singer's followers had skyrocketed to a whopping 500,000. But the thing was, she went to school here. She's that nobody in bio class, Stella! Stella hurried past me into class, followed by a flock of people trying to take her pick and asking her to sing. Blah, blah, blah. Some of the boys even offered to take her home after class. Poof, please. What were they thinking? Ugh, she could play the fragile and confused act on these losers, but she didn't fool me. The dropped book scenario was so overrated, but... Huh? Why was Ben rushing to pick it up? What a traitor! Ben? Where's my homework? He couldn't even come up with a better excuse than, Um, I went out last night. This was baloney! I just heard him offer to help Stella with her homework. And guess what? This girl, still with her Little Miss shy facade up, told Ben that she could do her own essay. Ugh. Did she think she was Beyonce or what? 
acting all high and thinking she's the beacon of the universe? I was furious. So she wanted a taste of fame, huh? Let's just say, as a senior in this field, having experienced its downside, it was time I taught her some manners. <laughs> After that, I made sure she became the main topic of every single talk in school. Hey, she needed to learn how this fame game worked. Everyone was giggling, pointing, and whispering behind her back. She had to cover herself with a hoodie that hid half of her face and walk through school in anxiety. Yeah, I know that paranoid feeling all too well when you obsess with why people keep on giving you odd looks. Then one day, I was putting my books back in my locker when I glimpsed someone running past me crying. It was Stella. And she dropped a note that said, If I were you, I wouldn't have shown up at school ever again. You're a joke. Gosh, do people even say these things? This was way too harsh. What happened? For God's sake. He didn't think I was the one who wrote this, did he? From that day on, Ben completely ignored me. And worse, he was glued to Stella, comforting her as people talked behind her back. Ugh. Then one day, I was tying my shoelaces when I heard some cheerleaders trying to open someone's phone. Right at that moment, Stella stepped out of the shower stall. Upset to see others violating her privacy, she tried to fight back. But oh boy, this wallflower couldn't even make them budge. <sighs> Fine, I'll help her. But only this time. You tattletale! You think you run the place now just because you're popular? Go tell Ben I didn't put that note in your locker. Better yet, call him right now. Oh, come on. Just run to the bleachers and tell that nerd. Go! What are you looking at? I went over to the bleachers to find Ben comforting Stella. What now? Snitching on me again? Actually, Stella was just telling me that you didn't write that note. Could you be any more foolish? So, you're just gonna bluntly do whatever I tell you to? Don't mind her. It's just who she is. A bit rough, but a truly great friend. Uh, I don't make friends. Yeah, I'd learned it the hard way. Back in my early days on Instagram, the only friend I trusted posted a video of me changing in the school's shower stall. I still had my tea inside my shirt, but that taught me a cruel lesson about friendships and fame. When you're famous, people will always want something from you. You can't trust anyone at all. You hear me? Stella! Who's that? Liam, Stella's friend from the music club. They look good together, don't they? What? Are you jealous of him or something? For that silly chick? Ben didn't say anything, but just blankly stared at them. Huh? He never looked at me like that anymore. Now I was no longer the Instagram queen. That meant I was no longer his queen. <sighs> it was true there was no one I could trust. A few days later, there was a big football match. We were going up against our rival school for the final, and Stella was singing the national anthem. Even the mayor and a local TV station showed up for it. Crazy! Ben was part of the AV team, so when some dude told me Ben wanted to talk to me, I went to the AV room to find him. What did he want to talk about? Hopefully not something to do with Stella. Ugh. But as I got there, no one was around. Huh? Right at that moment, the screen showed Stella stepping up to the podium preparing to sing. But instead of the soothing melody, a string of strange, distorted sounds came out of her mic. What was going on? What are you doing here? Ashley! He pushed me aside and hurriedly fixed the sound system. And just a minute later, things were back to normal and Stella could restart the song. Ben gave me an accusing look, then dragged me behind the bleachers, where we met up with Stella and Liam. Then Ben told her I'd messed with her mic. 
Ugh! How could he think I was capable of something like that? Meanwhile, this Liam guy stepped in, saying it could have been a technical error. Yeah, whatever. I went to leave, but Liam caught up with me. Weird. Weren't he and Stella having a thing? He immediately denied it, saying they were just acquaintances from music club. But you... I've been wanting to get closer to you for a while. You're the true Instagram queen. Not Stella. Whoa. This guy was a top-class jerk. Just a minute ago, he had his hands wrapped around Stella, and now he was trying to leech onto me. He even started leaning in to kiss me on the cheek. Quickly, I dodged it, as I met Stella's gloomy look from behind. Yikes. It was time to get out of here. I didn't sleep so well. Ugh. All this stress was bad for my skin. So... I was groggily making my way along the school corridor when Stella stormed up to me. It was you, wasn't it? You were so mean to me, threatening to delete my IG account because you were so jealous Ben had left you for me. Now it's really gone, and it's all your fault. What are you talking about? I had nothing to do with your stupid account. Yeah, I gossiped about you to mess with you a bit, but that was all. And you? You think I did it too? Excuse me? Did he just ignore me? And there Ben was, my so-called friend who turned his back at me right at the moment I needed him the most. And I never threatened to delete her account. Why did she make it up? Was she that jealous of me and Liam yesterday? What's this? An unexpected message from Liam said, Hey Ashley, don't worry sweetie, I've got your back. What do you say we meet at 8 p.m. in the park? Ugh, this shameless, two-faced jerk. What was he up to this time? So after class, I slid a note into Stella's locker, pretending to be from Liam, saying, I have a surprise for you. See you at 8 p.m. in the park. I arrived on time to find Liam already waiting. He kept putting on this simping act like he was madly in love with me or something. I can help you prove everything, and I only ask for one tiny favor, that you'll be my girlfriend. You can do that? But how? Well, you can just simply put the blame on someone else. Let's say, Ben? Oh, honey, you don't have to do anything. Just come to me and let your man handle it. Ugh, this guy made me want to barf but I still had to play it cool so I could figure out what this dude had up his sleeves. Sounds interesting, but I want to know more. How are you going to carry out your master plan? Honey, I've already got all the pieces of evidence in my hands. <laughs> you mean... That's right. I was the one who deleted Stella's IG account, and I know a way to blame it on someone else. You did what?! Ashley, I let my jealousy blind me. So when I saw him flirting with you right in front of me, I... I just lost it. At least you're not the only fool around here. He played both of us. And for the record, he's so not my type. <laughs> <laughs> Your type? Hmm, let me guess. Someone like... Ben? <laughs> He's such an idiot. He'd never realize I have feelings for him. But you're more of his type than I am. Besides, the way he just abandoned me when I needed him the most. Uh, Ashley, I didn't mean to hurt you like that. What? You've been there the entire time? Yeah, I've heard it all. Including the part about how you have... Feelings for me. Look, it's not what you think. I'm not into Stella that way. The thing is, I saw her singing at a coffee shop and realized right away she's my favorite anonymous singer on Instagram, so I sort of revealed her identity online. One thing led to another. I felt so guilty I just stayed by Stella's side and accidentally pushed you away. And it's not that I don't trust you. After you left... I tried to convince everyone you didn't do it, but they didn't believe me. 
Then Stella showed me the note in her locker of Liam asking her out. And I recognized your handwriting. I got worried, so... So... You didn't turn on me? Yeah. I know you can seem cold sometimes. But deep down you have a good heart. So, turns out that Stella going viral meant some local lounge singer had lost a lot of gigs. So she hired Liam to delete Stella's account for good. This guy was no joke. The note, the cheerleaders, the mic accident. He was responsible for it all. Luckily for me... I'd managed to put my phone on record mode for the entire conversation I had with him. So the next day, I went ahead and reported him to the principal. Well, no bad deed goes unpunished. So I hope you enjoy your indefinite suspension, Liam. <laughs> as for me, I no longer go solo anymore, as I have a new friend by my side, who now has quit social media and enjoys her passion for singing. And Ben is still Ben. Such a doofus. But my doofus. Hmm. I wonder what's taking Valerie so long. She's been in that changing room for ages. Valerie? Is everything okay in there? Don't force it if it doesn't fit. No, this is the last dress in store. I just need to breathe in for a bit longer. So? It's beautiful, isn't it? Valerie spun around. Then suddenly... Yep. Trying to squeeze into a dress two sizes too small for her, then it split. <sighs> the giggles around us started. Valerie blushed, hurriedly paid for the dress, and pulled me out of the shop. Why am I so fat? Ugh! I just want to feel pretty on my date. If I was skinny like you, I wouldn't have this problem. Poof! You know, it's not as easy as you think being thin. Yep, you heard me right. Being thin has its downsides. First of all, fashion. My nightmare. I have to wear an extra small size, and the clothes still hang off me. Actually, most of my clothes are from kids' stores, so I feel so untrendy. Then in winter... I have to wear tons of layers just so I don't freeze to death. And in the summer, <sighs> I can't wear cute clothes as I look like a coat hanger. Not only that, because I'm so skinny, people often ask me to do nonsense stuff. Once, I was studying in my room when suddenly I heard my sister Camilla calling me. She'd forgotten her keys and forced me to climb through her tiny window gap to get them. Seriously! I can't even! Then, on another occasion, Valerie made me crawl into the classroom locker to help her cheat on her Spanish test. Unfortunately, the teacher walked in while this was happening and gave me a week's worth of detentions, of course. Ugh! Oh my god, No Way Home is so good. I literally can't think of one bad thing to say about it. Yep, the part near the end? Ah! Yep, guess what? I'd managed to trap my foot in a manhole. Man, what rotten luck. I tried pulling my leg free, but it was no use. It wouldn't budge. There I was, freaking out that I'd be stuck here forever, and all my friends could do was huddle together and ask me questions like, Madeline, how on earth did you get your foot in such a small slot? Wow, that's unbelievable. Even Jaden, my bookworm friend, took out a ruler from his backpack and started measuring how wide the slot was. Grrr. My dear friends, I'm being stuck down here. Stop gopping and help me! Finally, they tried helping me out, but in the end, we had to call the rescue squad. By this point, a massive crowd had gathered around me and strangers were filming me. When I was finally free, everyone looked at me and held back their laughter. Even Parker, my crush, was smiling. Jeez, this was beyond embarrassing. But a hot guy like Parker would never notice a moving skeleton like me anyway. <sighs> Don't think like that, Maddie. You're so pretty. Show me some confidence, would you? Valerie said as she nudged my arm. 
I put the book down and glared at her, and suddenly noticed Parker walking towards our table, smiling. And, yep, he said he wanted to sit with us. Even though I was cheering inside of my head, I still had to act composed. And, oh my god, can you believe he even said I was cute? After that day, Valerie kept on encouraging me, saying he had definitely given me a green light. So, finally, I gathered my courage to write down all my feelings for Parker on a note and clipped it to his notebook. At the end of class that day, he came to my desk and took my hand. Yay! Everything was fine, great even, until one day when the two of us were taking a romantic walk past the Swan Lake, Parker suddenly turned to me and said, You're so beautiful, Maddie. And if you just put on a few more pounds, I swear you'll be the hottest girl at school. Yes, I know, but it's hard for me to gain weight. No big deal. Just leave it to me. I'll fatten you up. I thought Parker was just joking, but it turns out he was being deadly serious. Since that day, every time we went on a date, instead of taking me to the bowling alley and movies as usual, Parker would take me out to eat. I swear, I've tried all the restaurants in our town. More surprisingly, on my birthday, Parker even gave me a bouquet of fried chicken. How romantic! But this didn't change anything, as my weight still stayed the same. Parker was disappointed when he peered over me and saw the scales hadn't budged. Then he sighed out. How come you and Valerie are friends, but look totally opposite? Here comes our adorable chubby Valerie. What? Parker called Valerie adorable again. This wasn't the first time either. Annoyed, I put down my fork and walked away from them. After that, I started avoiding Valerie. I did homework with other friends, sat with other girls at lunch, and every time I happened to see Valerie, I turned around and walked away. Honestly, I didn't want it to be this way, but... Just seeing her made me uncomfortable. But I couldn't bear to see my boyfriend call my BFF cute while he thought I was too skinny. <sighs> then summer break finally rolled around. I thought it'd be just me and Parker, but then he went off to a summer camp in Spain. <sighs> the plan was all ruined. So I spent a whole sunny day inside sulking. What's wrong? Are you bored because your lover is away? So why don't you take this time to surprise him when he returns? Surprise? A great idea popped into my head. But, but how do I get chubby? Easy peasy. Okay, if it's that easy, then show me. Okay, if you do my summer homework for me. What? She's such an opportunist but I really wanted to pile on the pounds and please Parker. So, without hesitation, I nodded in agreement. So, from that day on, I started following Camilla's weight gain plan. I switched veggies for greasy foods, and my main meal was always late at night. I also changed water for milkshakes, but I did have to stop drinking them when the smell of milk alone made me feel sick. Seeing me eating crazy like that, my parents worriedly said, Madeline, eating healthily is important, else your health will be affected. But I ignored their advice. This time, I definitely had to gain weight. Finally, after a month of trying, I gained some weight. Yay! I looked a lot more attractive now, didn't I? I was studying myself in the mirror when I heard my phone beep. It was Parker. He was coming over tomorrow with a present for me. The next day, I put on this hot dress that I'd never felt confident enough to wear before, and I asked Camilla to help me do my makeup. As soon as I finished, I eagerly waited for Parker in the living room. The doorbell rang. I excitedly opened the door, but as soon as he saw me, Parker quickly said, Oh, sorry. I have the wrong house. Then he started to leave. Huh? He didn't recognize me? This will be fun. No, honey, you're not mistaken. It's me. Your destiny. 
Madeline? Is that really you? Oh my, how on earth can you be this big? We've only been apart for a month. So, you don't think I'm prettier now? To my surprise, Parker shook his head. No, no, you're so fat now, it doesn't look okay. Lose some weight. Huh? This was so confusing. I thought he wanted me to be bigger. As annoying as this was, I still listened to Parker and tried to lose the weight I'd put on. <sighs> so, it turns out that losing weight is far trickier than it sounds. Actually, it's a million times harder to lose it than it is to gain it. After a month of healthy eating and exercise, I gained another pound. Ugh! Stop eating that. Are you giving up already? You must try harder. What? It's just some popcorn. Why does he have to be so rude about this? I'll give you two weeks to lose weight. Else we're done. Huh? What did he just say? Done? He was the one who wanted me to gain weight in the first place. Now he was threatening to break up with me if I didn't lose it. How ridiculous. You know what? I don't need two weeks. Let's end it right now. It's clear you never loved me at all. You only like my appearance. If you truly cared about me, you wouldn't care what size I was. Then I walked off. Ugh, how could I have been so stupid? For the entirety of my relationship with that jerk Parker, I was blindly following him. I only cared about pleasing him, and it cost me so many things, including my best friend. I needed to apologize to her right away. I nervously knocked on the door, then waited. Finally, Valerie opened it, but on seeing me, she went to shut it. I'm so sorry. Just let me explain, please. Valerie, I'm so sorry. It was all because I was afraid Parker would leave me for you. But I realize now that he's a massive jerk, and I was an idiot for ever trying to change for him. Jeez, you're crazy. Parker is totally not my type. I scratched my head and told her about how terrible Parker had treated me and how I'd foolishly listened to him. Man, that douchebag! Then she hugged me. Valerie confessed to me that she'd been trying to lose weight by lowering her calorie intake, but the pounds were coming off. And worse still, she felt weak and tired all the time. I nodded in agreement with her. So, from then on, Valerie and I made a promise to love ourselves, regardless of what size we were, and to never let anyone try and change us. And look, that's Walker and Joel, our awesome boyfriends who love us just the way we are. And you know what? It feels so good not caring what other people think. So, don't ever let idiots put you down, because when you allow yourself to just be you, then you can finally realize just how beautiful you truly are. I entered the apartment to see four sets of eyes gawping at me. Hang on, I know Ned and Philip from my math class, and the girl currently giving me a snooty look while twirling her hair around her finger was Jessica. Well, I didn't actually know her, but her wealthy and snobbish reputation preceded her. Then lastly was that emo kid, what was his name again? Deciding to break the uncomfortable silence, I said, Oh, hey, so guess you guys are also in detention? No one replied, though they surely heard me. Whoa, okay. This atmosphere was tense, and I thought I'd always been the awkward one. Honestly, I don't even know why I'm being made to do this weird detention. All I did was accidentally and poorly throw the dodgeball in the gym teacher's face. Then, when I was about to apologize, my tongue slipped. But, but, aren't you supposed to be the toughest since you're the gym teacher? I mumbled. Naturally, she was livid. So I ended up in the principal's office, and he handed me a piece of paper with an apartment address on it and said, Go here for your detention. You'll stay here until you've learned your lesson. Huh? What type of unspecific instructions were those? 
Before I could ask him any more, he shooed me out of his office. Now, here I am in this random apartment with these untalkative kids. As I looked at them, I couldn't help but wonder what they'd done to end up here, especially when Ned was an excellent student. Did he make the wrong move in the chess club or something? <laughs> we continued the whole staring at each other in silence routine. But then the door burst open and stormed in Gwen, our school's resident carefree tomboy. She sneered out. Good evening, babies. Great. Now I was stuck sharing a living space with a girl renowned for playing pranks such as toilet papering the principal's car and filling the biology lab with live frogs. But seriously, how were we at her truancy level? Let's see who we have here. Gwen rubbed her hands as she walked around and stared at us. Princess Jessica? Oof, how come? She raised an eyebrow and grinned sarcastically. Just sit down and shut up. Gwen gave him a dirty look. This isn't basketball. You're not the captain here, jock. Then she squared up to him. Ned turned pale. Jessica rolled her eyes. And the emo boy, well, he was busy sketching something and clearly chose to ignore our existence. We'd only been here for less than an hour. And the last thing we needed was a fist fight. So I stepped in between them. Pulling a wry face, Gwen said, What's this? Little Miss Friendly? Look, we're all stuck here and we don't know for how long, so let's at least try to be civil. Let's try talking it out. So, I'm Ashley, and I'm here because of a misunderstanding with a gym teacher and a dodgeball. Jeez, nobody cares. I can't believe I have to be here with these people. Jessica stood up and left. Poof. I'm with Miss Popular on this one. Ned sneered before he also left. And the emo boy, too. Then Gwen rasped and disappeared. There was only Philip and me left in the room. Hmm, he was meant to be handsome and stuff. But looking at him now, I didn't think so. Ugh, this awkward silence was insufferable. This was just like that movie, The Breakfast Club, but much worse, and in much longer time. <sighs> who on earth had to pack clothes for detention? I had no idea how long I had to stay here for. So I decided to go to bed. I walked into the girls' room to see that both of the beds next to the window were already occupied. Bummer, they'd taken the best spots. I reluctantly got into the only bed left and hoped that tomorrow wouldn't suck as much as today had. The next morning, I woke up to yelling. Huh? I rubbed my eyes and yawned. It was still far too early. I went out into the corridor to see what was going on and saw Jessica and Ned arguing over the apartment's only bathroom. Jessica wanted to apply her makeup while Ned really needed to go. Then Philip watched on and butted in on occasion to say something dumb. Why don't you use some of your nerdy mathematics to solve your problem? The only reason you need to spend so long applying makeup is because you're ugly. Ooh, burn! Philip laughed. Suddenly, the bathroom door slammed shut. They rushed over to it and tried opening it to no avail. Ten minutes later, the emo kid stepped out. Jessica screamed at him. How dare you! My personal stuff is still in there! I watched on, wide-eyed. OMG, these people were ridiculous! How was I meant to live with them? In the end, we eventually came to an agreement about the bathroom's rule. It was first come, first serve, but each of us could only have the throne for a max 15 minutes. Being in such a small space with people I barely knew was always going to be problematic, but not having our phones as a distraction made it so much harder. We had one TV, but there's only one lousy channel on it. No one cleaned up. No one seemed to get along. Ugh, seriously? When will this end? All of the constant dirt and arguing was driving me nuts. But then the final straw was this one time when I was washing my face, the cleansing foam accidentally got into my eyes to wipe it out. But to my horror, when I opened my eyes, so I quickly reached for a towel, I saw myself holding someone's sock instead. Yuck!
After that, I gathered everyone and threw the sock onto the floor and said, We need to sort out order, as I can't live like this anymore. It's gross. Jessica snorted. Who are you to boss around? No one cares what you think. Before I even had a chance to say anything back, Ned piped in that Jessica was just a dumb rich girl who never lifted a finger. Then Gwen jumped up to her feet and started shouting for no reason. Philip gave me this smirky know-it-all look that made me want to scream. Then he actually lobbed a basketball at me, which almost took my head off. Then, ignoring the others, I started shouting at him. The only one who stayed quiet was the emo boy. You weren't even that pretty. In fact, I've seen more attractive slugs. I heard Ned say to Jessica, Hmm, that was a bit much, wasn't it? I mean, it was obvious Ned only teases Jessica because he has a huge crush on her. Jessica huffed as she tossed her hair behind her back, then stormed off to her room. Man, this place sucks. At least lunchtime had arrived. So I made myself a delicious-looking burger, then quickly went to the bathroom. When I returned, I couldn't believe it. Philip was taking a bite out of my burger. I screamed at him, but then he shrugged, then said he'd make me a new one. And like a decade later, my replacement lunch finally arrived, and Philip was smiling at me strangely and watched on as I bit into it. Ew! I lifted up the top of the bun to see a raw piece of beetroot. Ugh. I was so fed up with everyone that I went to bed super early that night. Only, when I woke up the next day, both Jessica and Gwen burst out laughing at me. I hurried to the bathroom and checked out my face. Oh no. Turns out someone had drawn on my pillow, and now I had ink all over my face. I had to scrub my face for ages to get it off. Then Philip wouldn't quit laughing at me. I knew he was responsible. Ugh! Such a jerk! And on the other hand, we also had the emo kid that I was seriously getting sick of. He never said or did anything. Instead, he just sat there, usually wearing his stompy boots and looking all moody. I mean, why wear those sweaty-looking boots when he's stuck inside? It was about time he spoke up, so I came up with a prank to get him talking. When the emo kid was in the shower, Ned and I filled his beloved boots with mayo. A little later, I heard some loud thump. Then the emo kid did a weird walk across the room with his foot covered in mayo while clutching one of his boots. Have you lost your mind? He shouted. And not gonna lie, I was intimidated by this other side of him. Then out of nowhere, Jessica appeared. She turned to me and shoved my shoulder. That was too much, don't you think? Oh no, you didn't. I wasn't gonna let someone like her speak to me like that and get away with it so I struck a defensive pose and glared at her. We ended up in a stare-off when suddenly I felt arms pulling me back. It was Philip. I tried flailing free of his grip, which caused him to lose his balance, and he accidentally elbowed Gwen. Oh, you're done, Jock! Soon, Jessica and I were pulling each other's hair, and Gwen and Philip were shoving each other. It was mayhem! Stop! All of you! It was the emo kid. He glared at us with rage. You're acting like immature brats! Well, that was unexpected. But I guess it worked. As a few seconds later, we started cleaning up the mess we'd made. We knew something needed to change. So at dinner, we all sat around the table and tried to sort things out. The others were all staring down at their food and not talking, so I decided to go first. So... I'm here because I don't always react well to certain situations. I don't know. I guess I find it hard to make friends. I trailed off. Then Ned spoke up. The only word my mom seems to know nowadays is study, study, study. I feel like all I am to her is a grade. So when I got a B in English lit, I ripped it up in front of the teacher. That's the story. Jessica flicked back her hair then said, Try having all the money you could ever want but the most neglectful parents ever. I bet they still haven't noticed that I've been stuck here with you losers for days now, just because I told some girl her skirt was hideous. I was doing her a favor. Pfft. 
Then Philip blurted out, My father wanted me to be strong and manly just like him. I don't want to be like him, but I'm worried I will be, and that I won't be able to do anything about it. So I skipped basketball practice, got into an argument with the coach and my dad, and now I'm in the weirdest detention ever. Gwen sneered. At least your dad's around. Mine does month-long disappearing acts. And my mom's dead. Oh, and I'm here because I put paint in some clown's locker. Serves them right for badmouthing me. Her words were followed by an intense silence. Awkward. But I felt like I understood everyone a little better now. Oh, but hang on. The emo kid hadn't said anything. Hey, you. I looked at him. So, what's your story? He shrugged, and I didn't think he was going to talk, but then in a quiet voice he said, I'm Stan. I never knew my dad. My mom isn't around, so I live with my grandparents. I'm here because I ignored the principal, but only because I had earphones in. Oh, I muttered out. Look, I'm sorry about your boots. I'll help you clean them if you like. Stan nodded. Jessica was right. I had been a bit harsh on him. Then Ned gave this awkward smile and said, Um, Jessica, I know I've been a jerk to you, but it's only because I, um, I like you. Jessica didn't do so much as flinch. She still kept studying her nails. Probably because having boys smitten over her was already a part of her daily routine. Well, I might like someone too. Phil stretched his arms behind his chair. I guess I like winding her up. He looked directly at me. I felt myself blushing, and I had this weird fluttering feeling in my stomach. But why? My heart started racing. Now what was I meant to do? Admit it. Come on. You took my necklace, didn't you? Mindy looked at us and shook her head. She was sweating. Well, there are only three of us in this house, and if Andy didn't take it, then obviously it was you. Seriously, Cass, you got to believe me, I didn't take it. But clearly she was lying, because when I rummaged through her bag, Cass's necklace was right there. Cass told her to get out of her house, and Mindy burst into tears. Poor Mindy. I really wanted to stop Cass, but she seriously hates people touching her stuff, so I just kept quiet. You see... Cass and I are pretty much joint at the hip. We've always lived in the same neighborhood, so we grew up together and shared everything. Well, almost everything. Except one little secret that would probably ruin our friendship forever if she found out about it. Andy, what are you doing? I started to stammer. Uh, um, uh, um, this is so cute. Honestly, I'm so upset about Mindy. I can't believe she'd do something like that. I smiled, not knowing what to say. I mean, it was me who had exposed her. Suddenly, I felt so guilty. Right at that moment, we got to the checkout. Cass took everything out of the cart to give to the cashier. Hang on, she exclaimed. What is this? This item has the barcode ripped off. The cashier made a fuss for a while and even called the manager. Cass and I stood there for ages, trying to figure out what was going on. Cass even started crying, thinking she'd be accused of shoplifting. After about 30 minutes, the store manager came and told us we could leave. They kept the items that had no barcodes and sent us on our way. Phew, that was close. What? What do you mean? Oh, nothing. I'm just relieved that we didn't get into any trouble. Just so you know, though, that wasn't the first time we would got ourselves into an awkward situation while out shopping. Sometimes it was the torn barcodes. Sometimes the tags were missing. Then the security alarm would always go off at the door. And all of these situations weren't just coincidences. Okay, I gotta be honest here. The thing is, I have a habit of pilfering. Not because I can't afford stuff. I mean, my dad's the owner of a bank, so money isn't the issue. My dad basically buys me the latest phone every month. And you should see my wardrobe. I have all the designer bags. I steal because it gives me the kind of thrill that my boring daily life just can't give me. My dad just hands me money every day. And never stops to think that... Maybe I'd like a hug or a how are you. Ever since my mom left when I was just a baby, he's been using money as a way to keep the peace. So one day when I was in elementary school, I stole a hairpin from the girl who sat next to me. It felt so good, like my own little secret. 
I loved the drama that came with it, and the fact that no one ever suspected me because I was such a rich little girl. After the hairpin, I got addicted to stealing little things and couldn't stop. It felt like the only thing I could control in my life, and so I kept on doing it. And here I am now, still getting a buzz from it every single time. And yep, you've guessed it. The one who took the necklace at Cass's sleepover was none other than me, of course. But at that time, because I was so scared, I slipped the necklace into Mindy's bag and pretended to find it there. I was deep in thought when suddenly Alex's scream startled me. Guys, I've lost my unicorn pen. You know the pen that glows? The whole class was suddenly in uproar. Some friends were trying to look for it. Meanwhile, Alex was walking straight towards me. Andrea must have taken it. This morning when I took out the pen, me and her were the only ones in here. I looked up at Alex, my heart pounding in my chest. This is it. I'm so done this time. Then I suddenly looked over at Scott Parker, the cute boy who just transferred to our class. Oh no, I couldn't give him a bad impression of me. I had to quickly think of a way out of this. You waited until I went to the bathroom to take it, didn't you? Alex, I'd never do such a thing. Besides, I have loads of nice pens. In fact, you can have one if you'd like. I pulled out a beautiful pink rhinestone pen from my pencil case and handed it to Alex. While Alex stared in awe at my pen, I suggested everyone go check their lockers to see if her pen was there. Sure enough, right by the lockers was the glowing unicorn pen she'd lost. Right in front of Scott. I picked up the pen and handed it to Alex. I'm so upset you thought I'd steal this from you. But it's okay. At least we found it. Alex blushed and apologized to me. Our other friends also blamed Alex for not looking for it carefully enough and for jumping to conclusions about me. Next time, don't be so silly. Andrea is a good person. Besides, her family is so wealthy. Why would she need to steal a pen from you? I just smiled and walked away. Suddenly, a voice called out from behind me. It was Scott. He looked at me and said, Wow, that was totally dramatic. I'm Scott, by the way. You're Andrea, right? I'm sorry if this is a bit forward, but here's my number. Excuse me? Am I dreaming? Of course I texted him as soon as I got home. He said he was so impressed with how I'd handled being blamed for the whole thing. Soon we were chatting every day, and eventually he asked me to be his girlfriend. I was so happy. But there was just one small problem. Ever since we'd started dating, I felt really ashamed about my bad habit of stealing things. I was determined to give it up, but it wasn't going to be easy. One day, Scott came to pick me up and asked if I wanted to go to the bookstore. A bookstore? No, I don't want to go there. Can we go somewhere else? Please? Seeing me panic like that, Scott looked puzzled. Then he suggested we go to his place to watch a movie, which I was fine with. Hopefully there would be no temptations for stealing there. A middle-aged woman opened the door for us at Scott's place. Oh, this is Sandra, our maid. Hi, Sandra. I'm Andrea. But instead of saying hi back, Sandra just stared at me in a seriously creepy way. It actually sent shivers down my spine. After watching the movie, Scott and his mom invited me to stay for dinner. Scott's mother, Mrs. Doris Parker, was really sweet, and we had some interesting chats. While waiting for dessert, I got up to go to the bathroom. But as I stepped out there, I almost bumped into Sandra. She was just standing there staring at me again. Uh, sorry. She didn't say anything, but just kept staring at me in this weird way. Oh my gosh, why was she looking at me like that? The next morning at school, Scott told me his mother had just lost a valuable ring. She had a jewelry tray next to the bathroom sink, and after washing her hands, she'd forgotten to put her ring on. After dinner, the ring was no longer there. I comforted Scott, then made an excuse to go to the ladies' room. I needed to seriously think about this. Honestly, I'd tried my best to not get the urge to steal at Scott's place. But when I'd seen Doris's beautiful ring, no, I had to find a way to return it. No one could find out about this. And I had sworn to myself that I would never let this happen again. Hello, San- Huh? Where's Sandra? Oh, she was fired. Mrs. Parker said Sandra had stolen her jewelry. Anyway, may I help you? Oh, no. I had to return this ring immediately. Poor Sandra. Scott came down for me and said he'd make dinner. I glanced through the window to find Doris was having tea in the garden. This was my chance. I snuck up to her room, quietly tiptoed in, and headed towards her jewelry box. Suddenly, the light came on. 
Tell me what on earth are you doing here? I quickly turned around, dropping the ring to the floor. M- Mindy? Why are you here? I'm Scott's cousin, so it was you who stole the ring. I can't believe my cousin is dating you. Hearing the noise, Scott and his mom ran upstairs while I was still dumbfounded and speechless. It was you who stole Cass's necklace too, wasn't it? She won't even speak to me because of you. I'm so sorry. I know it's not okay, but I couldn't stop myself. I've been feeling so guilty, so that's why I'm returning it. I was still kneeling on the ground when a hand reached out to me and helped me stand up. I'll handle this. Come on, let's have a chat outside, shall we? Turns out Mrs. Parker is a therapist. She could see I had a problem and offered to help me. I told her how guilty I'd been feeling about Sandra getting fired and asked Doris if she could call her for me so I could apologize. Thirty minutes later, Sandra arrived. As soon as Doris saw her, she apologized and offered her the job back. But no, no, ma'am. I was the one who stole it, and I deserve to be punished. I'm sorry, Sandra, I've already confessed to Mrs. Parker that I stole the ring. I didn't mean to get you fired. I just couldn't help it. You didn't do anything wrong. I, it was me? I was greedy? She is innocent. What on earth is going on? Obviously I was the thief, so why was she defending me? Why are you doing this? Do we know each other, Sandra? And that's when the truth came pouring out. Sandra was my mom. Yeah, I don't know how this is possible either. So according to her words, she'd had a huge fight with my dad when I was a baby, and she'd fled to another city where she found a job working for Scott's family. When they moved to Seattle, she came with them. Even though she was nervous about returning back to where me and my dad were, she'd carried so much guilt about leaving us, and never in a million years did she expect to bump into me at Scott's house. I was so shocked, I couldn't even speak. I'd imagined this moment my whole life, and now... Here I was, standing face to face with her, and she'd even taken the blame for me. I couldn't believe it. Mom, I'm so sorry that I stole the ring. I I can't believe you're really here. Sweetie, you don't need to apologize. I'm the one who will be apologizing for the rest of my life, abandoning my daughter like that. What kind of mom am I? How will you ever forgive me? We stood there hugging for what felt like forever, and I knew in that moment that I'd never steal again. Doris diagnosed me as having kleptomania due to a lack of love from my mom, but now that my mom was back, I had no reason to seek out those thrills from stealing. I had everything I needed right here. There were a few moments where I almost stole again, but Doris told me to call my mom as soon as I felt the urge, and when my mom picked up the phone and I heard her voice, the urge faded, and I felt so much better. Scott and Cass and Mindy forgave me after Doris sat them all down and explained more about my addiction and where it stemmed from. Now, Scott and I are still together, and I see my mom every day at Scott's place. My dad hasn't forgiven my mom for leaving yet, but baby steps. Finally, I feel like everything is complete, and my pilfering is a thing of the past. My best friend Tasman is the most popular girl in school. You know the type. Pretty, rich family... The kind of girl who has everything. I guess some would say she's a spoiled brat. I mean, she's pretty nasty to people, and her mood swings are so unpredictable. Plus, she likes to pick on everyone. But luckily for me, we've been friends since we were little, so I knew she'd never treat me as badly as the other kids. But she didn't exactly treat me nicely either. In fact, most of the time, I felt like her maid. But... There were good days, too, where she was the greatest friend ever, buying me stuff and even taking me to her fancy country club on the weekends. But when she got cranky, oh my god, I bore the brunt of it. She'd yell at me and complain about every little thing I did, and then she'd order me around. I was like her little stress ball or something. One time, she realized her gym clothes were wet, so she made me swap with her, so she could wear my dry ones. It looked like I'd peed my pants, and everyone laughed at me. She didn't even stick up for me. It was like she used me so she could shine even more. Whenever we hung out with boys, she'd drag me along, but didn't let me know beforehand, so I'd show up looking sloppy, and by that way, she'd look amazing next to me. She clearly didn't want me to get any attention. 
One day I put makeup on and she said I looked like a clown. And then there was the time she wanted to date this guy, but he would only date her if she brought a friend for his brother. So she brought me and oh my god, his brother was such a weirdo. It was awful. I could handle her though. And compared to the other kids at school who had it much worse, I was okay. I felt bad for them and wished I could stand up to her and protect them, but I wasn't brave enough. To be honest, it wasn't just because I didn't have the courage to stand up to her. It was also because there were way too many advantages of being her friend. She was always generous and gave me all her old clothes, even if she'd only worn them once. She had this super cute skirt, but then she saw another girl wearing it and immediately gave it to me. She gave me a brand new pair of high heels that she said made her legs look fat. Honestly, most of my pretty clothes and shoes came from her, and she always brought me gifts back from her family's luxury vacations. But despite all this, I couldn't ignore the slight resentment I felt towards her. And, okay, there's a bigger reason why I put up with how unfairly she treated me. You see, Tasman has a twin brother called Trevor, and I had a major crush on him! Hanging out with Tasman meant I got to see Trevor more often. Compared to his sister, Trevor was so chilled, but sometimes he was quite cold, even slightly mysterious. So that's why they didn't really get along. Tasman always said mean things about him behind his back. Things like how he was just so lame and such a grandpa. But one time, I almost messed things up while hanging out at their house. Trevor was chilling and playing guitar out on the patio by himself. So I pretended to wander around, then approached and complimented him. But Tasman caught sight of that while looking out from the kitchen. Afterwards, she grabbed me and said, Hey, what was that? Did you just flirt with my brother? Ew, uh, do you have some kind of crush on him? Don't you dare. If you do, then our friendship is over right now. I was so shocked at how she reacted, so I quickly denied it and said, Ew, come on. Your brother is gross. I hoped she couldn't tell I was lying. After that incident, I told Tasman I had to go home, as I had some crafts to finish. She just burst out laughing and said crafting was for losers. It really upset me, though, because I loved doing DIY stuff, and my cousins and the kids next door had asked me to start teaching them how to do it. My one cousin had even persuaded me to start making videos on it. So even though Tasman thought it was totally uncool, I still went ahead and secretly started a YouTube channel to share my DIY tutorial videos. The kids on my street all loved it. And pretty soon, I had quite a few subscribers. Then I took it a step further and made hand puppets of some popular cartoon characters and started doing puppet show videos. Slowly but surely, my channel started to pick up speed. There was one viewer with an account called Cherry Pie that was always the first to leave a comment. She'd even DM'd me on my channel's Twitter account, and we started talking almost every day after that. One day, I decided to make a video to properly introduce myself to my channel's viewers, but I was too shy to show my face, so I did it with the puppets instead. The audience seemed to be more interested when I talked about my own life, and so I started telling them about my family and friends, and of course, that included Tasman but I changed everyone's names to fun nicknames and changed my voice a bit so no one would recognize me. I started to talk a lot about Tasman and how she tortured me and the other kids. I gave her a horrible voice that sounded like a monster and even showed how she would laugh at what people were wearing. I got so into it that I started to make stuff up, like saying how she stole other kids' lunch money, made them do homework for her, and made them buy her snacks during each recess. She always acted like she was some kind of queen. I realized how many feelings I'd buried deep inside me over the years, and now I had this creative outlet to release them all. I even shared the story of when Tasman got dumped by her ex-boyfriend and how she tried to get him back and turned up on his doorstep. He was with his new girlfriend, and she started clinging to his ankle, begging him to ask her out again. Tasman would die if she knew I'd shared this, but I couldn't stop myself. After uploading that video, I gained so many views and subscribers, it seemed like people could really relate to these stories of mine. But weirdly, my number one fan, Cherry Pie, disappeared. I really missed her, to be honest. A few days later at school, everyone was whispering about my channel, and it quickly became clear that they knew about my videos. How had they found out? But then, to my complete horror, 
I realized they could see my school uniform in one of the videos, and everyone realized the villain I was talking about was Tasman. She was furious about it, and said she was going to find out which of these losers had done it and make their life hell. I was so terrified, I set all my videos to private and even took a few days off school, as I felt so worried about what would happen if she discovered it had been me. Then one day, Cherry Pie suddenly DM'd me again. I thought she was going to ask about where the videos had gone, but instead she said, Looks like you got what you wished for. Everyone's talking about your channel, and now you're finally in the limelight. Oh. My. God. Did this girl also go to our school? Who was she? It couldn't be Tasman. Could it? I replied with like a hundred questions, asking who she was. Did she know who I was? How did she find me, and what did she want? But I got no reply. But then, a few hours later, I got a message saying, Come outside. What? How creepy! I started to feel scared that maybe I had a stalker or something. I grabbed my pepper spray and headed outside. But instead of some crazy fangirl, Trevor was standing there. Hang on, Trevor is Cherry Pie? He said he'd found out about my channel because one time at their house, I'd been reading the comments on my phone, and he'd passed behind me and caught sight of the name of the channel. He became curious, so he made a fake account so he could watch my videos, and that's when he developed a crush on me and enjoyed watching them regularly. Well, that was until I mentioned his sister and made up all those fake stories about things she'd done. That's how Tasman found out about the videos. She borrowed Trevor's laptop one day and saw it open on his screen. But at least the only person who knows it's my channel is Trevor. He said he was really disappointed in me and thought I was better than that. Then he said he was going to delete his fake account because he didn't want to be a phony liar like me. I was heartbroken. How could I have been such a terrible person? I don't know what to do. Should I confess to Tasman that it was me and apologize to her and Trevor and hope they'll forgive me? Or should I just keep quiet and instead focus on being able to stand up for myself and tell Tasman that it's not okay to pick on people? Being the awesome class president that I am means that it's my job to show this new transfer student, Willow, what's what around here. So obviously this is the canteen. Heads up, don't eat the stew. Yuck. If you have any trouble finding something, just ask me. Well, I haven't seen you since middle school. What's up? Um, just still the same. Um, okay. Oh, you must be confused, but actually, I already know Willow. You see, we went to the same middle school together, but to be honest, we never really talked to each other back then. She seems to still be as quiet as always. Oh, and by the way, I'm Natalie, but you can call me Nat. The next few days, I saw Willow always sitting in a corner of the classroom and doodling. She looked kind of lonely, so being a nice person, I decided to sit and talk to her. Hey, Willow. Nice shirt. She just gave me this weak smile, then continued doodling. Ugh, talk about awkward. The best thing I could do was just to stupidly smile back, then swiftly left. I didn't really bother with Willow after that. I mean, I said hi if we passed in the hallway or something, but that was it. But it turns out Willow's introverted tendencies hadn't gone unnoticed by other students. As when we were on our school expedition to the woods, I overheard them talking about her. Do you all think that Willow seems a bit weird? Yeah, you're totally right. One time I asked to borrow her eraser, and she just gave it to me without saying anything. She didn't even look me in the eye, just kept on drawing. It was so strange. Huh? Are they seriously gossiping about a new kid? Yeah, so she might not be too sociable. But people should just learn how to respect someone's personal differences, right? Hey, Willow is new here. I don't think it's very nice of you to gossip like this. Also, she's my friend from middle school, so please stop this. But just wondering, has she always been like this? Um, yeah, I guess. Actually, I was quite surprised to see her in our class. In middle school, her grades weren't that good, so it's kind of odd that she's in the top set with us. I could see the whole group was looking at me with surprised eyes. But hey, that was a few years ago. Now, so maybe she's changed, I quickly corrected myself. Then, a few days later, I was standing by my locker when suddenly my best friend Layla appeared and gripped my shoulders. Oh my god, have you heard the news? Everybody is saying Willow only got into top set because her parents made a huge donation to the school. Can you believe that? What? 
Who's spreading this absurd rumor? I don't know, but someone's saying that she wasn't that smart in middle school. Oh. My. God. Was the rumor culprit me? It was me. I did it. At the expedition. Oh no, I, I didn't mean to. Oh, how could I let this happen? Then when I entered class, I noticed a sobbing willow being comforted by some other students. I felt horrible. So I also went over to her and tried to cheer her up. Don't worry about it, Willow. Everyone knows this rumor is a lie. Why would anyone do such a thing? I mean, I just transferred here. Who would hate me so much to say something so mean? Oh, man. I sure felt guilty. Oh, could things get any worse? Um, yeah. Turns out they can. As after class, Miss Holmes suddenly asked me and Willow to stay behind. Oh, no. Did she know I was the one who started the Willow rumor? I sat there, sweating like a turkey at Thanksgiving, waiting for Miss Holm to bust me. But then, to my surprise, she said, Nat, please, can you help me get to the bottom of this horrible rumor? Phew, what a relief. But at the same time, I was freaking out. How was I supposed to catch the person responsible when I was the one who started the rumor? Albeit accidentally. Oh, what a dilemma. Wait a minute. I think I have an idea. What about I blame it on a troublemaker? It's not like they would care anyway. Whilst I'm a straight-A student, and getting into trouble for this could affect my chances to get into a prestigious college and ruin my life. Right at that moment, this guy called Bob shoved past us, then leaned against the wall and scrolled through his phone. Bingo. Gotcha. I put one hand against the wall and gave him a suspicious look. Hey, Bob. How you doing? Um, fine. So... About this Willow rumor? Who did you hear it from? Bob just shrugged and continued staring at his phone. Or did you do it? Maybe you were bored. So you spread the rumor to tease the new girl. Am I right? Or what? Only by then, Bob looked at me. What? Are you crazy? I don't know this Willow girl. Besides, I was off all last week sick. Now leave me alone. Oh man, this was a massive fail. Now what should I do? I needed a minute to think. Okay, don't panic, Nat. You're smart, so you'll think of something. That's when I turned and caught a glimpse of Willow's sad face. Don't worry. I will find out who did it. I comforted her. But inside, I was screaming. I hated lying to her, but this was an accident. I never meant to spread that rumor. At that moment, Layla appeared and said she wanted to help. Great. Like, this quest wasn't complicated enough. Ugh. Layla told us that she heard the rumor from this nerd, Ben. So we all tracked him down and asked him. But he heard it from some other dude, and it went on and on until a girl said that she heard it from Ashley. That's when I remembered that Ashley was on the talking group in the expedition. Oh no, I had to stop this encounter between us. So when they spotted Ashley, I started making weird noises and made out I had a stomachache. They were still going to her, so I had to scream loudly like I was in labor. In the medical room, I continued screaming as if I was in a lot of pain. The nurses diagnosed that it might be appendix pain, so I immediately needed to be transferred to the hospital. I instantly stopped screaming as soon as I heard that and said, it's just that time of the month. Phew, that was close. But at least I've successfully stopped them from investigating Ashley. Well, I spoke too soon, because right that second, Ashley walked into the medical room. But thank God she didn't mention me. Instead, she said Carl told her about it. Phew. To my luck, Carl was absent today, so the manhunt had to end here. It would unfortunately continue tomorrow, though. As we warily walked out of school, I glanced over at Willow and saw that she looked really down. Ugh, oh, that made me feel so bad. So to make it up for her, I asked her if she wanted to grab a sandwich. My treat, of course. And she said yes. Mmm, that sandwich was so good. And Willow seemed to enjoy hers, too. It was great to see her happier, so I decided to extend our trip by going to the mall. Willow kept on glancing at this dress, but it was out of her price range, so being the awesome friend that I am, I bought it for her as a gift. Well, that's the least I can do after everything I'd done to her, right? But then I noticed something weird. When I was standing at the counter to pay for it, I turned around and saw her smirking. Then when she saw me looking at her, she immediately smiled and thanked me for the dress. Huh, so strange. The next day, the rumor scavenger hunt continued. Ugh. We cornered Carl and questioned him, but he couldn't remember where he heard it from. Layla asked him to think carefully, and he just shrugged and said he had no idea. Layla got suspicious, so she immediately reported him to the principal's office. I didn't even have a chance to stop her. 
The next thing I knew, we were being called out over the loudspeaker and summoned to go to the principal's office. Then Carl confessed that yesterday he got an anonymous message via Facebook saying that they were willing to pay him if he agreed not to tell the name of the person who told him the rumor. He showed us his phone, but all the messages and the user account didn't exist anymore. That's right. I was the anonymous user who contacted Carl yesterday. Thank God I deleted the messages and the account on time. But things weren't that simple. The principal decided to suspend Carl for withholding information. Finally! My plan worked! But why wasn't I feeling happy about it? On the contrary, I felt bad. Really, really bad. Blaming someone for my mistake wasn't right. I couldn't do that to Carl. So I stood up and blurted out, It was me all along! I started the rumor, but it was an accident. Well, and that's it. Cue a two-week suspension. Now Willow is refusing to hear my apology and everyone else thinks I'm some villain. Only Layla has stuck by my side and remained adamant there was more to the story. Then, a few days later, when I was trying to curb my boredom with potato chips and a Love is Blind marathon, Layla came by and told me the shocking news. There may be a chance that I wasn't the person who spread the rumor about Willow. The thing is... Layla continued asking around school and ended up with a girl named Rosa, who had a reputation for gossiping. Rosa told Layla that she was in the bathroom when suddenly a girl in the cabin next to her started telling her about the rumor. Rosa found it odd, so she bent down to see who it was, but the only thing she could see was a pair of pink Nike Air Force One. Then Layla asked me, You know who always wears those, right? I nodded. But, objectively, there could be other girls who own the same shoes, correct? Fortunately... Rosa also noticed an important detail that will help us close the case. The right shoe has a tear mark. I checked our suspect's shoes, and they match. So we finally knew who really did it. We just needed a plan to trap them. The next day, we called Willow to meet us at a cafe and told her that we found the real culprit. But when Willow arrived, she immediately got mad and yelled at me. Stop blaming it on somebody else. Maybe the person heard you when you were speaking about me during the expedition trip. As soon as Willow said that, Layla and I immediately looked at each other and grinned. What's so funny? I never told you that I spread the rumor at the expedition. I didn't even tell the principal. I only confessed that I was the one who said it. That's all. Willow looked shocked. Then we told her about Rosa and how she saw Willow's shoes. So Willow couldn't deny it anymore. Okay, it was me. I've never liked you and you think you're so perfect. So at the expedition when I overheard you talking about me like that, It made me so mad that I came up with the idea to spread the rumor about myself and then blame it on you. So you'd look like a horrible person and I'd get people's sympathy. A genius plan, right? Oh my, oh my. Who would have thought that the victim herself was actually the one who did the crime? Layla got so mad that she immediately wanted to report Willow to the principal, but I stopped her. I realized that it was partly my fault too. If I hadn't told people anything about Willow, then this never would have happened. So, well... After that, Willow and I stopped talking to each other. Actually, if I see her in the hallway, I'll purposefully walk the other way. But anyway, thanks to this incident, I learned some valuable lessons. Never, ever gossip, as it's just not worth it. And also, choose your friends wisely. Hi, I'm Belle. I'm 18, and today is my first day at Boston College. Isn't that cool? Oh, wait. I think I hear someone crying. Why don't we go shopping? It'll make you feel better. No, I don't want anything. Just leave me alone. Wait, that sobbing girl? She looked so familiar to me. Is that her? What are you looking at? The other girl snapped at me. Jeez, why so serious? The next day I decided to do the neighborly thing, so I brought an apple pie over to her. The door opened and whoa, She looked like she'd tackled a tornado. Her hair and clothes were messy and her eyes were swollen. Oh, um, hi. I'm Belle. I just moved here. Nice to meet you. Oh, hi. I'm Laura. Yes, Laura. Laura from elementary school. How could she not know it was me? Then my childhood memories started flushing back to me. Back then I was super shy because my family had financial problems. I was always in worn clothes. I guess this made me an easy target for some mean kids. Then one day, when I was walking home from school, those kids followed me, pushed me over, then started laughing as they searched through my backpack. 
But then a luxurious car pulled up alongside us, and Laura peered through the window and said to them, Leave her alone, else I'll revoke your invites to my party. After that, Laura left before I could even thank her, and the mean kids hurried off. Through my young eyes, I saw her as an angel. She was pretty and popular, but she'd still stopped to help me. Unfortunately, right after that incident, my parents thought it was best to transfer me to another school, and I never saw Laura again. Well, until now. Thanks for the apple pie. Come in if you want. Oh, yes, if you don't mind. I walked inside and, oh my, her room was a mess. There were clothes everywhere, trash on the floor, and dirty dishes overflowing in the basin. Something bad must have happened to her to get her this down in the dumps. So I asked her what was up, and she told me her boyfriend had just broken up with her. The worst part was she left her family and friends behind to move here for him. But then he ended things without even giving her an explanation. Poor Laura. The breakup was over two months ago, but it still seemed to be fresh in her mind. I tried comforting her, but the more I did, the more she cried. (sighs) The next day, I decided to swing by and check if she was okay. The door was ajar, so I peered inside and saw a glum-looking Laura sitting on the floor, hugging and sniffing something. Laura? What are you doing? (laughs) I found this, and I just miss him so much. Oh, turns out she was looking through her closet for her sweater, and ended up finding her ex's hoodie. That's it. Enough was enough. It was time I finally returned the favor and saved Laura just like she'd saved me back in fifth grade. You'll never move on if his things are staring you in the face. I told her it was time to get her ex's belongings. And you know what? She had a whole big box of his stuff. I took a look, and that's when I saw a photo of them. This is... him? I couldn't hide my surprise. Yeah, that's Cameron, my boyfriend. Or should I say my ex? Why do you ask? Oh, um, nothing. Just thank God you're not together anymore. The word jerk is written all over his face. Then we threw the whole box in the dorm's dumpster downstairs. The poor girl looked like she wanted to jump right in there to retrieve it. I'm going to help you get over this guy. I promise. You're about to discover just how fun being single can be. Oh, you're single too? Um, yeah, of course. Now that her ex's stuff was in the trash where it belonged, it was time to live our best happy single lives. Each morning, I dragged Laura jogging around the park with me and showed her how to prepare delicious healthy meals. Can you believe that she didn't even know how to boil an egg without burning the pot? Yep, I know. It's shocking. Then one time, her basin blocked up, and she was totally freaking out. I came to the rescue with my trusted plunger and showed her how to fix it. Easy peasy. And best of all, no man was needed to save these damsels. (laughs) Next, I needed to show Laura how to enjoy life, because all she seemed to do was slump around her room. So, on Saturday night, I dragged her and Kayla to this really cool bar. Man, I'm thirsty. Martinis? My treat. Hold up, Laura. Do you want to know how to get free drinks? And then I told her to walk past some guys, flip her hair, and wink at them with the cutest smile on her face, and bam! Just like that, we had drinks bought for us. Laura seemed very happy with what she just accomplished, and that made me happy too. Only Kayla didn't look so thrilled about it. Maybe her martini tasted too bitter. (laughs) While we were having fun, my phone suddenly rang. Oh my god. I've been longing for that call. But why now? I put it on silent and continued chatting. Why aren't you answering? Oh, it's nothing. Are you sure? Seems important. Yeah, no worries. Before I could finish my sentence, I suddenly heard someone calling Laura. Laura? Oh, Jack! Hi, it's been so long! I'm surprised to see you here. Are you alone or with friends? And before Laura could introduce us, the guy stared at me. Hmm, hey, I think I know you. Nah, I don't think we've ever met. I immediately denied it. But this guy was so insistent, he kind of made me uncomfortable, that I accidentally knocked over my glass. Then I had to make a mad dash to the bathroom to clean myself up. Anyway, that night was great. I was kind of proud of myself for proving to Laura that being single wasn't so bad after all. But then, the very next morning, disaster struck. Kayla ordered me into Laura's room, where she was curled up on her bed, 
holding a photo of her and Cameron. Ugh, so much for getting rid of all reminders of him. Laura sobbed out that Jack told her that Cameron was seeing someone else, and now Kayla had come up with an idea to get revenge on him. I know this hurts, but please, just ignore him and move on with your life. Pfft, what do you know? Are you on Laura's side or her jerky exes? I just ignored Kayla and tried to talk to some sense into Laura. Thank God she seemed to listen to me and cancel the revenge plan. Oh boy, Kayla looked furious. I went back to my dorm and let out a relieved sigh. And suddenly my phone got an incoming message. Can't wait to see you tomorrow. Okay, the truth is, I'm seeing this guy who I like loads. But I didn't want to rub Laura's face in it, so I haven't mentioned it to her. The next morning, I put on a cute dress, did my makeup, styled my hair, and excitingly stepped out of my dorm room to find stacks of trash bags in front of my door. Who on earth did this? I dragged them downstairs to put them in the dumpster. When I found all my mail in there covered in trash juice. Ew. Was this a prank or what? Whatever. I didn't have time for this. I was already late. I arrived at a gallery and saw that he was already here looking at a painting. Hey, sorry for being late. He turned around with a smile. Well, you're worth the wait, you know. Okay, please let me explain. So, yep, that's Cameron, but it's not what you think. I met him the other month as he was helping out at an event for new students. He didn't care that I wore thrift store clothes and that my sneakers weren't cool. Instead, he saw past these things and started talking to me first. So, Jack was there too, which is why he sorta recognized me. I've been texting Cameron loads, and I must confess, I think I do have feelings for him. But don't get me wrong, I didn't know Lara was his ex until I saw the photo of them. Oh boy, that sure shocked me to the core. I didn't want to tell her and not only break her heart all over again, but also destroy our friendship. That's also why I didn't care to answer Cameron's call in front of Lara when we were at the bar. And I was super lucky that Jack didn't recognize me that night, or it would have been a total disaster. I know I needed to tell Lara the truth, but first she just needs a little more time to get over Cameron. Ugh. I went home from the date with a big smile on my face, but what I saw made it instantly fade. My entire makeup collection was smashed up. What? Who would do something so mean? It took me ages to save up to buy all that. As I checked to see if any of it was salvageable, I saw a long blue hair nestled amongst the carnage. Furious, I was about to go confront her, but Kayla and Lara had already appeared in my doorway. Why did they look so angry? How could you befriend me like that when all along you were seeing my ex? So your you don't need a man speech was all just one big lie so you could take my guy, huh? <laughs> and do you really think Cameron would like a girl like you? You can't even afford a decent handbag. Right. Let me tell you this. You will never be like one of us. And you'll never be good enough for Cameron. How could Laura think of me like that? I truly wanted to help her. Like she'd helped me. I totally only have good intentions, Laura. I had no idea he was your ex when we first met. The only reason I didn't tell you sooner was because I knew you needed more time to heal. And I didn't want to hurt you because I adore you and value our friendship. Do you remember fifth grade? I was being teased by these kids and you were the only one who stood up for me. I just wanted to return the favor and help you too. But hearing you say that stuff makes me so sad. After that, I shooed them out of my room and locked the door. I refused to go to lectures and ignored all Cameron's calls and messages. Maybe Laura and Kayla were right. Cameron and I weren't meant to be. We were from two different worlds. Eventually, a few days later, I had to go outside. Well, because I ran out of food. When I passed by a coffee shop, I saw them, Cameron and Laura, sitting together. <sighs> so Kayla was right. A rich guy like Cameron would never like an ordinary girl like me. I couldn't live in the same dorm as Laura anymore, so I was packing my stuff to move out of there. Suddenly, I heard Laura's voice. Are you running away from your problems like I did? I ignored her and continued packing. You know, I met Cameron, and we had a long talk. 
He finally told me why he broke up with me. It was because I was too dependent on him, and I couldn't do anything on my own. But you, you helped me stand on my own feet. And for that, I can never thank you enough. Laura, I honestly always wanted to tell you the truth. I know, but it doesn't matter anymore. You know, the important thing now is to enjoy my independent single life, right? Oh, I got you these. Kayla was way out of line destroying your things. Also, I think there's someone who wants to see you. Suddenly there was a knock on the door. I opened it and, oh my god. Standing there with a huge bouquet of flowers was Cameron. So it looks like I can continue getting to know Cameron now, and I don't have to move out anymore. But do you know what the best part of all is? I have my friend back. Hey, what's with the long face? Oh, hey, it's nothing, just a bad day. You know, you can tell me everything, right? I'm your best friend, so I know when something is up with you. Spit it out. Okay, you're right, as always. (laughs) I think you should hang on to something, because this is shocking news. I- Oh? My god. Who is that? He looks so gorgeous. Sue, are you even listening? Huh? What did you just say? I turned to him, but he mumbled out typical, then walked away. Jeez, what's his problem? Oh, that was Lucas earlier, my best friend since kindergarten. Don't mind him, he's always like this. But whatever, let's get back to this handsome guy. So it turns out his name is Alex, and he's new here. I knew it, because such a pretty boy like him would never go unnoticed by me. The next morning, I couldn't wait to walk to school with Lucas. I had some amazing news to tell him. It happened to me the night before, during my shift at the diner. Lucas, you won't believe who was in the diner yesterday. Robert Downey Jr.? What? No, it was Alex, the new student. Gosh, Lucas, you've got to help me get his attention. You're on the baseball team together, right? Huh? Do you like that guy? Seriously? Duh. I mean, look at him. He's like Timothy Chalamet's twin brother. So will you help me, please? Ugh. Fine. Hmm. I did hear him say he likes girls on roller skates. I have an idea. The next time he comes to the diner, serve him on skates. It's a sure way to impress him. Oh, yes! That's a great idea! I hugged Lucas to thank him. So, the next time Alex came into the diner, I took out my roller skates and was ready to serve him his spaghetti. I'm kinda a novice on skates, so I slowly slid over to him. So far, so good until I didn't see that somebody had spilled their milkshake all over the floor. And yes, of course, I slipped. Oh no! I quickly covered my head to avoid the spaghetti plate, but... Huh? The plate had fallen on the floor, but where was the spaghetti? I looked around. Oh, snap! I found it! It landed on Alex's head! It was so humiliating. But worse still, as hard as I tried, I couldn't get back on my feet. Ugh, stupid skates. I repeatedly apologized to him. At first, Alex looked totally shocked. Then, perhaps because of my pathetic look, he couldn't hold it in anymore and burst out laughing. (laughs) Well, at least you dare to slide on them. I, on the other hand, am not a big fan of those. (laughs) What? What did he mean by that? Ugh, Lucas! The next day, I went looking for Lucas to confront him. He was easy to find, as he was in his favorite place to browse in town, the sneaker store. Why did you tell me Alex likes roller skates? Because he definitely doesn't. (laughs) Haha, maybe I misheard him. Oh, wait, he likes girls in superhero costumes. That's right. What? That sounds ridiculous. Forget it, I'm not listening to you anymore. Go give your advice to some other poor girl, not me. What's up with Lucas? Why would he give me such bad advice? It's like he wanted me to fail. But why? Oh my goodness. Was he, maybe, into me? Nah, nonsense. Still, I had a feeling about it. So I decided to avoid Lucas as much as possible. I came up with loads of excuses not to hang out with him. Such as mom was driving me to school, and I was skipping lunch because I was on a diet. 
Ugh, it was so exhausting. I mean, have you ever tried sneakily eating your lunch in class so you don't pass out from hunger? However, this was necessary, as we both needed some space. It's the only way to keep our friendship safe. But then one day, Lucas messaged me. Can we talk after school? I have something important to tell you. Oh no. Was he going to confess his feelings? But if he did it, our friendship would be ruined. I couldn't let that happen, so I didn't meet him. Instead, I ran straight home. He called me a bunch of times, but I ignored them all. I ghosted him, to be exact. Jeez, I wasn't proud, but I had to save our friendship from stupid Cupid. But then the next time I saw him, he only gave me a hurt look, then purposely walked off in the other direction. Oh, no. Now it was basically like a cold war between us. Ugh. We might not have been hanging out with each other, but I was still keeping an eye on Lucas. I'd been watching him for a couple of days, and it looked like he was having a tough time. He must have figured out my rejection, so now he was miserable. Oh, dear Lucas, I didn't want this to happen, but I can't risk losing our friendship. But then I noticed something. One time, the whole school went on a picnic trip. I watched Lucas from afar and noticed that he was giving dagger looks to a bunch of girls. Hmm, hang on. They were surrounding Alex. I even saw him trip another girl up who was going to join the group of girls adoring Alex. And then he made out it was an accident. Another time, I overheard him telling girls from other classes who were standing by the class door trying to get a glimpse of Alex that he pretended to be all cold and quiet because he had hideous teeth. Which, of course, wasn't true, because he had a smile that could light up a room. Ah, uh, looks like it wasn't just me. Lucas didn't want any other girls going near Alex. Did he hate Alex that much? Or, or, he likes Alex? For heaven's sake! Stop thinking such nonsense, Sue! Your head was messing with you. Then one day, my mom heard that Lucas's mom was sick, so she made some chicken soup and told me to bring it over to his mom. I didn't want to go around there. I mean, what if I saw Lucas? Awkward. But who was I to deny a sick lady soup? When I arrived, I opened the door and let myself in as I usually do. And that's when I heard the conversation between Lucas and his mom. Lucas, do you need to forget about Alex? I want to, but I can't, mom. He's always on my mind. <sighs> anyway, the important thing is your health. You need to eat something. Look at you, you're not getting any better. How can I eat? After your dad left us, it's like all this time I've been living in a lie. I'm so sorry. Wait a moment. My Sherlock Holmes intuition was kicking in. Now everything makes sense. Why Lucas was sad for a couple of days, why I hadn't seen his dad for a while, and why his mom was suddenly sick. It's because Lucas was gay. His father probably didn't take it so well, so he left, which was really devastating for Lucas's mom. But I'm his best friend. Why didn't he tell me? Man. He hid it really well. But not only that, he also tried to sabotage me when he knew I had a crush on Alex. Well, it turns out we weren't best friends like I thought. Ugh. But no, I couldn't just ignore this. I needed to talk to Lucas to clear things up. The next day, Lucas had baseball practice. So I went to find him at the field, but he wasn't there. I asked some of his teammates, but nobody knew where he was. Hmm, where could he have gone? And that's when I saw Lucas with Alex behind the bleachers. Well, well, well. Look at them. A lovey dovey. They talked for a bit, then each of them walked away in a different direction. I watched them from a distance with my arms folded. That traitor! I was so ready to yell in Lucas's face. And that's when our eyes met. He was startled when he saw me, like he'd just been busted. Well, it was technically the correct word to describe the situation. Sue, Sue, what are you doing here? Why do you look so flustered? Come on, I know about your relationship between you and Alex, so you don't need to hide it anymore. How, how, how did you know about it? I heard you and your mom talking about it, but I don't understand. How could you do this to me? You knew that I liked Alex. I know, but I couldn't explain. I was so ashamed. You should have talked to me first, but instead you stole Alex from me. Best friends don't do that to each other. Hold on a minute. What did you just say? I stole Alex from you? What do you mean? Ugh, come on. Just stop with all this hiding and lying. I know you two are together. What? Why was he overreacting like this? Was what I just said not true? Well, turns out it wasn't. I was totally wrong. Just one thing was for sure. My detective intuition sucked. And that's when Lucas told me the truth. Lucas and Alex weren't in love. Lucas even hated Alex because he's Lucas's half-brother. Oh my. It's like I got lost in a telenovela or something. When my mom was pregnant with me, 
my dad got drunk and made a big mistake with a colleague of his. She fell pregnant with Alex, but my dad didn't know about it. Then, a month ago, Alex's mom was diagnosed with a serious illness. She didn't want him to end up alone if she couldn't make it. So she showed up in dad's life again and messed everything up. Oh. My. God. So that's why Lucas's mom all of a sudden got so skinny and sick. And Lucas's dad didn't leave them. No, it's because his mom kicked his dad out of the house. I wanted to tell you in the canteen the other day, but you were too starry-eyed over Alex to listen. This made me mad, so I tried everything to prevent you from getting close to him. My family's broken because of him, so I don't want my best friend to fall for someone like that. Oh, it turns out I'm a really bad friend. My best friend had problems at home, and I didn't even know it. No, because I was busy daydreaming about a guy I barely knew. I apologized to Lucas and promised that I would pay more attention to him. And then we hugged. On the plus side, at least none of my crazy theories were true. <laughs> so it turns out it was all just one big misunderstanding. The Cold War between us ended, and our friendship remains as amazing as ever. I also managed to convince Lucas and Alex to give each other a chance. After all, they're half-brothers, and what happened between their parents wasn't their fault. Besides, Alex's mom is seriously ill, so he needs Lucas more than ever. It's great hanging out with them both and seeing them laughing and joking about. Ah, peace at last. The three of us have become pretty great friends. Oh, do you want to hear something funny? Lucas actually offered to matchmake me with Alex. <laughs> but it's okay. I refused. Why, you ask? Well, the three of us are such awesome friends now, and I don't want anything to ruin that. Pretty mature of me, right? <laughs> I gripped onto the swing chains and stared down at my feet. Someone was walking over. It was Lydia. What's up? She asked as she sat on the swing next to me. Hey. I managed a weak smile. It's probably nothing. It's just... My parents have been arguing a lot. Then this morning, Mom smelt some unfamiliar perfume on Dad's shirt and accused him of cheating. Is he really having an affair? Lydia rubbed my shoulder. No way! Your dad probably just got caught in a spray mist cloud at the department store or something. You shouldn't jump to conclusions that quickly. Your dad loves your mom. Anyone can see that, so don't worry. I mumbled a... Yeah, in agreement. My name's Cora, and as corny as it sounds, before this incident, I had been pretty satisfied with my life. I'm attending a renowned university, I get along really well with my parents, and despite being an only child, I've never felt lonely, as I have my best friend, Lydia, for company. She's more of a sister to me. Regardless of the problem, I just needed to drop her a message, then we'll meet at our spot, which is the swings at the park. Yep, I had it all, and I thought nothing would ever change that. It turns out that I was wrong. So it all began with my dad. He was acting oddly. He often looked at his phone, then smiled to himself. And then he'd take his phone into the bathroom and not come out for ages. This didn't go unnoticed by mom, but when she asked him about it, he just shrugged and said that he had some problems with his digestion. Then, while mom was doing the laundry, she smelt an unfamiliar perfume on his shirt. She marched over to him, threw the shirt at his head, and demanded that he explained himself. Dad denied it and said it was probably just his work colleague's perfume and that she was overreacting. That's why I arranged to meet Lydia at our spot. And as usual, she was so sweet and supportive. Lydia was right. Maybe I had thought too much. I came home and caught mom crying in the kitchen. She looked at me with puffy eyes and said, Something isn't right. I just know it. He doesn't look at me like he used to. I sat down, hugged her and said, Mom, let's stop overthinking. I trust dad. He'll never betray us. I stayed to comfort her for a while. Then eventually she calmed down. The next evening, dad came home with a big bouquet of blue roses, mom's favorites, then he cooked dinner for us both as an apology for making us sad. Mom looked touched, and she also apologized for misunderstanding him. I told myself that things would be okay now, right? For the next few weeks, Mom and Dad seemed to be fine. But then, on my mom's birthday, we invited Lydia and her mom Josie over for dinner. 
My mom was busy in the kitchen, so I took the birthday gift off of Josie for her. That's when I smelt it. Her perfume. It was the same scent that had been on Dad's shirt. I was sure of it. Over dinner, I noticed that Josie kept on looking over at my dad and laughed at all of his dumb jokes. Oh God, was my dad having an affair with my best friend's mom? I felt like I'd explode, but I couldn't say anything to Lydia as I didn't want to upset her. So I'd do my best to avoid my best friend until I figured things out. This worked for a few days, but then one day after a class, she rushed over to me and said, Cora, why are you avoiding me? I pretended not to hear her and kept on walking, but she grabbed my arm and continued. Did I do anything wrong? Will you please just tell me? I spilled out. I'm pretty sure that my dad's having an affair with your mom. At first, she looked shocked, but then she hugged me and kept on apologizing. It was all too much for me, and I burst into tears in her arms. She told me that she'd talk to her mom and find out what was going on. The next day, I met Lydia at our spot. She looked super awkward, then said, It's true. My mom had a month-long affair with your dad, but she promised that it's over. My world came crashing down around me. I just couldn't believe it. Lydia hugged me and told me it'd be okay. I was so lucky to have such an awesome friend like her. We both decided it'd be best not to tell my mom. The affair was over, so why break my mom's heart now? I tried carrying on like normal, and for the next few weeks, it really felt like everything was okay. Dad was really sweet with mom, and he even surprised her with a posh dinner out. But then, one afternoon, I saw dad pacing the garden. He was on the phone with someone, and I heard him say, Okay, I'm coming now. Then he got into his car and drove off. I decided to follow him, and it soon became clear where he was going. He pulled up in front of Josie's house and then walked straight inside without knocking. My heart sank, so he was still seeing her. Without a second thought, I called Mom and blurted out, Mom, Dad's having an affair with Josie. I'm there now. Come and join me and we'll confront them together. Five minutes later, my mom showed up. She looked both sad and furious. We went straight to the front door and banged on it, and I yelled out, Open up! We both know about your dirty relationship! But suddenly, someone spoke behind us. Hey, Laura. Cora. Is everything okay? We turned around and saw Josie standing there with a grocery bag in her hand. I was about to tell Josie to stay away from my dad when Lydia opened the door and gave us confused looks. What are you doing here? Oh, do you want your dad? He's fixing the dishwasher. Then Josie said, Lydia, I told you to call a plumber out to fix it. The plumber said he was fully booked today, so I think that I could ask Mr. Roberts for help. She replied, Oh no! So it turns out I'd misunderstood what was happening and messed everything up. Suddenly, my dad appeared in the doorway and said to us, What's all this banging and shouting about? Right, we're all going home now to talk. As soon as we got home, Dad waved his arms about in anger, then yelled at Mom, You're crazy, jealous, and unreasonable, and I can't be around you anymore. I felt so bad. This was my fault, not Mom's. So I tried explaining this to Dad, but he just told me it wasn't my business and continued to shout at Mom. At first, Mom just sat there silently, but then she quietly said, is it any wonder I act how I do? I mean, you have been having an affair with my friend. Right, if you keep on being this ridiculous, then let's divorce. Then he stormed off. It was horrible. Now mom was inconsolable, and I felt awful for telling her. That night, I messaged Lydia to meet up, but she called me instead. She told me that she'd called my dad to ask him for the plumber's phone number, but he said that he'd come and fix it. She also said that Josie and him really were over. Then she hung up. This was kind of odd, but I suppose Lydia was finding it tricky being stuck in the middle of things with her mom and me. I guess I just needed to give her some space until things cooled down. After that, mom and dad barely said a word to each other. Talk about tense. Then, one day, 
Mom decided to move to my grandparents for a few weeks, as she needed time to think everything through. I didn't blame her, but I didn't want to stay home alone with Dad, so I went and stayed with a college friend. One night, I came home to pick up some clean clothes when I saw it for myself. My dad was kissing her on the couch. I couldn't believe my eyes. He was such a liar. So I coughed to clear my voice, then said, Oh, so it's over, is it? They both looked up at me, and that's when my eyes met with hers. Only it wasn't Josie. Nope, it was Lydia. She stammered out, Cora, why, why are you here? What? Lydia? So my dad had been having an affair with Lydia? How could the girl who was always there for me through high school breakups, bad grade mishaps, and growing pains do this to me? Then dad put his arm around her and told me everything, that he had never had any affair with Josie. It was Lydia all along, and that they were in love and wanted to get married. It was all too much for me, so I rushed out of there. Lydia ran after me and called out my name. Then when she caught up with me, she grabbed my arm. Cora, wait, I, I want to explain. Your dad and I... I interrupted her. Why lie? Why say it was your mom? I'm sorry. I just wasn't ready for everyone to find out then. So I sprayed my perfume on my mom and made up the story that she'd admitted to having an affair with him. As for the dishwasher thing, well, I set that up, as I knew you'd follow your dad and call your mom. I feel bad, but your mom needs to know. He doesn't love her. He loves me. I jerked my hand away and shouted, You're such a liar! You don't deserve to be my friend, and you can't have him! He's with my mom! Suddenly, she changed her attitude, smirked at me and said, Cora, let's accept the truth. Your dad is bored of your mom. Actually, I'll be your stepmother soon, my little daughter. Then she left. I had jello legs, and I was so overwhelmed that it made me feel dizzy. So I sat on the curb and tried to calm myself down. Then I called mom and told her everything. She cried a lot, but she thanked me for telling her the truth. After that, mom came home and told dad she wanted a divorce. Then she demanded that he move out. This was six months ago, and it's been hard, but Mom and I are getting there. I haven't spoke to Dad or Lydia since, although I've heard that they're living together. I know I can't avoid them forever, but I just don't know if I'll ever be able to forgive them. For now, I'm staying strong for Mom and helping her through this. Then maybe one day in the future, if they contact me, I'll be ready to meet them, and maybe, eventually find it in myself to let them back into my life. I was minding my own business when I noticed everyone was giving me weird looks. Hmm, what's wrong? I turned the corner and saw Cynthia and her followers blocking my locker. Oh, great. There she is, the girl that's into old men. Aw, is it because you don't have an actual dad, so you found yourself a sugar daddy instead? O-M-G. What is she talking about? Everyone was gawping at me and her friends burst out laughing. Panicked, I turned around and ran to the restroom. Those girls are so vile. How can they have taken such a simple situation and manipulated it? I locked myself in the cubicle and didn't dare come out. A knock at the door caused me to flinch, but then I heard a familiar voice. Nicole? It's me, Olivia. Are you okay? I opened the door and saw my friend standing there, looking at me with concern. She hugged me, then led me out into the hallway where Miss Barnes was waiting for me. The rumors had reached her, and she wanted to talk to me about it. <sighs> Sweetie, I want to help you, but you need to tell me everything. I had nothing to hide, so straight away, I told her everything about Sean, who's my karate teacher. We became friends since we shared the love for guitars, killer karate moves, and old-school punk rock bands. When I finished, she said, To be honest, I find it a bit peculiar that a man his age is choosing to spend so much time with a young girl. I think it's best I have a little chat with this Sean. So please, can you give him a call and invite him over? 
Sean came straight over, and as he chatted to Mrs. Barnes in her office, I nervously waited outside with Olivia. I'm just a girl without a dad. Sean is kind, and he treats me like his own daughter. What Cynthia said is cruel and untrue. Don't worry. No one believes Cynthia. They all know what she's like. A few moments later, Sean stepped out of the office. He scratched his head as he told me to say goodbye to Miss Barnes and Olivia, as he was driving me home. In the car, I asked, What did you say to Miss Barnes that made her agree to let me go with you? I, um, I said that the child would be around your age. Huh? What did he mean by that? Then he continued, Nicole, I have a long-lost child. I've been desperate to see them and be in their life, but it didn't work out like that. Then I met you, and I found myself bonding with you as if you were my own child. Hearing that, I asked right away, Sean, would you like to be my dad? He gave me this dumbfounded look, so I excitedly continued. I mean, you're single, right? So is my mom. Why don't you two meet up and have a date? Just give it a try, please. Whoa, if Sean was my dad, my life would be fantastic. I smiled from ear to ear, seeing him bewildered. In my head, I instantly began planning their first date. Eek! This was the most exciting thing ever! But my good mood soon evaporated, as waiting for me on the doorstep with crossed arms and a stern expression was my mom. This was definitely not the time to introduce them, so I quickly thanked Sean and hurried inside. Who's that man? She questioned me. I received a call from Miss Barnes, so I've been waiting for you. Who is that stranger? He's my karate teacher. He's just... Then Mom interrupted me. Why exactly is a man double your age choosing to spend time with a teenage girl? Don't worry, Mom. When you meet him, you'll see what a great guy he is. The next day, I arranged for them to have a lunch date at this quaint cafe in town. But the moment Mom walked in and saw him, she turned ghostly pale. Sean was also surprised. He stuttered, Lu- Louise? My mom cleared her throat. Ahem! Sean? This was confusing. I looked back and forth at them as if I was watching an intense game of tennis. So, they knew each other? Oh well. Less time wasted on getting to know each other. So, I'm gonna leave you to it. I waved at them, then hurried out of there and sat on a bench nearby. But it hadn't even been five minutes when Mom stormed over. Let's go! And dragged me away. I forbid you from seeing that man again! What was happening? I was freaking out as I followed her. Mom! Slow down! At least explain why! I shouted, but she bundled me into the car, then drove off, red-faced and silent. Through the car window, I saw Sean run outside of the cafe and stare at me with a saddened look on his face. Mom, you know him? I asked. She said, That's none of your business. You just have to know that you are not allowed to see him ever again. Why? I yelled as I started tearing up. He's nice to me. Why can't I be friends with him? Because you have to listen to your mother. Suddenly, my phone rang. It was Sean. I picked up, and he told me to turn the speaker so he could talk to Mom. Louise, it's me, Sean. Mom gave a startled yelp and told me to hang up, but I ignored her. Sean continued. Louise, listen. Is Nicole my daughter? Um, what? Did I hear him right? Can someone please explain what was going on? Louise, tell me. Is Nicole my daughter? Mom snatched the phone off me, ended the call, then threw it onto the back seat. I was too overwhelmed to find any words to say, so we both sat there in shocked silence. The moment we entered our house, seeing that I was desperate to speak, Mom spoke up first. Nicole, please don't ask anything. I'll explain later, okay? I really wanted to know what had happened between them, but I knew there was no reasoning with Mom when she was being like this. So I quietly went up to my room. I couldn't sleep, as too many thoughts were buzzing around my head. Could Sean really be my dad? I mean, 
I'd never met my real dad, and whenever I asked mom about him, she got super defensive. Mom and Sean clearly had history. So what if we're actually related? Unsurprisingly, I couldn't concentrate in school. I kept on yawning in class and playing over yesterday's events over and over in my head. When school's out, to my surprise, Sean was waiting for me at the school gate. We went to a coffee house, and there he told me the truth. Back in high school, I fell in love with my classmate. After a while, she suddenly told me she was pregnant and broke up with me. I definitely wanted to support and care for both of them, but she refused, then moved away. The last thing she told me was to stay away and never ever look for them. Before I had time to process his words, he smiled at me and continued, Nicole, I believe that you're my daughter, but first we need to talk to your mom and have her clear this up. Whoa, this was a lot to take in, but at the same time, it was also pretty awesome. I was so happy I had a father, and better still, it was Sean. I took Sean to my house to talk to mom, but just as we stepped inside, I got a message from Olivia. Check your social media. Cynthia's just posted something about you. Oh no, there was a photo of me getting into Sean's car with the caption, Need tips on getting a sugar daddy? Asked Nicole. I freaked out. Now, thanks to Cynthia, everyone would misjudge me and make fun of me. I was so furious that when mom walked over, I couldn't hold it in anymore. This is all your fault. Now everyone believes lies about me. And it's all because you won't tell me the truth. Mom gave me this hurt look, sighed and softly said, You're right. I do owe you both the truth. Then she turned to Sean. When I told you I was pregnant, that was a lie. What? How could she lie about something like that? I didn't want to be with you anymore. But I was too scared to break up with you decently. So I made that story up, believing that it'd scare you away. But when you said you'd stick around and support us both, I panicked. So... I moved away to college and found a new boyfriend. Then I fell pregnant with Nicole. But this boyfriend wasn't ready to be a father, so he abandoned us both. As I tried to absorb this new information, I found myself feeling an overwhelming sense of disappointment. Perhaps Sean felt the same, as he muttered out, I can't be around you right now. Goodbye, Louise. Then he left. My world had come crashing down around me. I didn't know what to do or say. So I just locked myself in my room and sat there in silence. A few days later at school, Olivia came running over to me and blurted out, Have you heard? Cynthia's been suspended for spreading false rumors about people. Now everyone knows that she's a liar. Well, I'm glad everyone knows. But honestly... Cynthia and her fake stories didn't really bother me anymore. I had bigger things to worry about, like Sean. I hadn't heard anything from him since Mum's confession, and I really hoped he was okay. Then, a week later, Sean texted me. Nicole, I care for you as if you were my own daughter. I don't want to lose you from my life. There's more. I've done some research, and I've found your dad. If you want, I'll take you to meet him. Gulp? I was finally going to meet my real dad. On the way there, Sean lightened me up chatting about guitars and tuning on Joy Division. It was so good to have him back in my life. I guess it's normal for kids who don't know a parent to imagine what they'd be like, right? Well, when I came face to face with my real dad, the reality didn't match my expectations. I showed him a photo of me and mom, and he denied ever knowing her and slammed the door in my face. Ouch. Sean made sure I was okay, then drove me back. The moment I arrived home, I flung myself on the couch and cried into the cushion. He must have filled Mum in on what had happened, as she rushed over to me. Honey, I'm so sorry. It's all my fault, because I'm a coward who couldn't deal with my own issues. But things will be different from now on. I promise. Then Sean knelt down next to me. Nicole, I meant what I said before. I view you as a daughter. And if it's okay with your mom, 
I'd love to be your dad. Mum nodded her head and said, Yes, if that's what Nicole wants. I leaped up and hugged them both. At that moment, I realized I don't care if my biological dad didn't want to know me. I didn't need him, as I already have Mum and Sean. Now, my mom has learned to be brave and confront her problems, instead of running away from them. She now co-parents me with Sean, and even though they aren't back together, they are great friends. And you know what? I've never been happier. I waited till my mom went out for groceries, then snuck into her room. I'm just borrowing. Just borrowing. I'll pay you back soon. I know what it looks like. Trust me. I don't want to steal from my mom, but if I don't do this, then I could lose my boyfriend and my friends. Then I'll be lonely and sad and easy prey for mean kids to tease. Ooh. I rushed to the park to meet Florian, my boyfriend. That's him over there. I walked over to him and handed him the money. You promise you'll pay it back soon? Sure, babe. You know you can trust me. I went home and convinced myself that I'd have the money back before Mum even noticed. But the next day at school, I couldn't find Florian anywhere. At break time, I asked my friend if she'd seen him, and she told me the shocking truth. Florian had been sent to reformatory camp. Oh my god, did he really just scam me? Feeling my eyes tear up, I rushed to a corner in the school garden. Okay, so... I don't actually have feelings for Florian. I dated him and hung around with the rebel kids because I wanted to build a cool image. The truth is, I'm just a poor girl. If people find this out, then my life would be over, right? They'd isolate me and tease me. Hey, Shannon. Are you okay? Oh, no. That's my friend Rachel. I can't have her see me like this. Hey, what's happened? She sounded so sincere. And I had to admit it, it would kind of be nice being able to confide in someone. So I blurted out how my dad passed away last year, and now mom struggles to pay the bills, and she works all hours in a factory. And how Florian tricked me into giving him money from mom's savings. To my surprise, Rachel put her arm around me and smiling sweetly said, It's okay, Shannon. I can lend you the money. You can pay me back whenever. My eyes lit up and I spluttered out. Really? You do that for... me? Of course. We're friends, aren't we? Wow, that was surprising. Turns out I'd massively underestimated my friend. I thought she would tease me if she knew the truth, but instead, she actually sympathized with me and tried to help me. At lunchtime, my friend Dee sat down next to me and asked why I looked so down. Hmm... I wonder. I then glumly stared down at my yogurt, sighed, and told her how awful things were for me at the moment. She rubbed my arm and told me it would be okay. Then she lent me some money. Wow, it worked again. I did this a couple more times and voila, I had enough money to replace in my mom's box before she even noticed it was missing. Oh, that's so pretty. It would be just perfect for my upcoming model audition, but there's no way I can afford it. <sighs> I glumly walked off, daydreaming about how amazing I'd look in that dress. Hi, Shannon! I turned around and... Oh, it was Brett, this dorky guy from school. He hurried over to me, nervously itched at his neck, and then spluttered out, Hey, Shannon! Are you shopping? Ugh! This guy was so annoying, as if a pretty girl like me would be interested in a dorky guy like him. Hmm, hang on. Was that a Louis Vuitton shopping bag in his hands? I must have been looking at it, as he lifted it up and, blushing, said, Oh, it's a present for my mom's birthday. I stroked his arm, then gave him my best doe-eyed look. Brett, you're such a good son. Your parents must be so proud of you. I wish I could get my mom something that meaningful too, but we're too poor. I sniffed. I can't even afford this really pretty dress I need for my audition. Brett smiled sweetly at me and said, That's okay. I, um, how about I get you the dress as a birthday gift? Your birthday's coming up anyway, right? 
Let's go! So that's how I ended up with the perfect dress. Oh, and I also ended up with a new boyfriend. Brett! At first, it was great being taken out to posh restaurants and bought lavish gifts for. But then the shine started to fade. I didn't like Brett in that way. In fact, I found him kind of annoying. He's not handsome at all, and he does the dumbest stuff. The other day in the lunch queue, he actually started showing me the terrible dance for his latest TikTok video, and it was so embarrassing. Whenever I had to hang around with Brett, I found myself daydreaming about someone else. This hot boy named Tyler. <sighs> if only I wasn't stuck in this rut with Brett. But it was worth it for the money and stuff. Right? Then one day at school, Rachel came over to me and asked me for her money back. I told her I was really sorry, but I didn't have any at the minute. Rachel sneered. Really? Then how come you have all this new stuff? You know my family's poor. I hardly ever see my mom as she works so much. I don't have any money. Fine. Whatever. She stormed off. Rachel must have spoken to the others about this, as when I was with Brett next to the lockers, they came over to me and all started asking for their money back. I tried explaining to them that I didn't have any money, but one of them snorted. Yeah, right. You've had us all fooled with your sob story. Watch out, Brett. She'll do the same to you, too. Then they walked off. Brett was giving me this questioning look. So I tried to act like everything was fine and started sorting my books out. He didn't say anything after that. So I acted as nothing happened and held onto his arm as we walked to class. Then suddenly, he pushed my hand away. Is it true? Are you only with me for my money? No! How can you say that? Stop being ridiculous. I tried to deny, but he wouldn't quit going on and on, which drove me mad. You don't trust me? Fine. I don't think I want to be with someone who thinks that little of me anymore. Goodbye. I then stormed off to the girl's restroom. Phew. I almost got exposed. But hey, at least I was now free of Brett, right? But what if Rachel and the others started making more of a fuss about the money? I didn't want them being mean to me about it. I needed to find a way to pay them all back. And fast. I approached Tyler after his basketball practice and asked him if he'd like to go for a drink. There, I put on the waterworks and told him all about my poor family and how I borrowed money from my friends to pay the bills, and now they're all mad at me. Tyler seemed genuinely concerned and instantly handed over some money. I hugged him and repeatedly thanked him. Mmm, he smelled so good, but I felt kind of bad. This isn't like with Brett since I really do like Tyler, and I feel guilty for taking his money. After that, I went and found Rachel and the others and paid them back. I thought my friends would be okay with me now, but turns out they weren't. Whenever I passed them at school, they sneered and gossiped about me. This sucked, but at least I had Tyler. We started hanging out all the time, and he was so sweet and funny. He also offered to lend me more money, but I refused as... I didn't want to borrow any more than I needed to ever again. Then, that evening, I was scrolling through my social media account when I saw some posts about... me. Oh no. They were saying how I took advantage of other people's sympathy to get money. I was freaking out. So I quickly replied to the thread saying it wasn't like that, and my life was hard. But then Rachel commented... Here she goes, playing the victim again. The next day at school was awful. I felt like everyone was gawping at me. But as long as Tyler was by my side, it's all okay. I was chilling with him by the soccer field when Brett walked over, an angry look on his face. You used me, didn't you? You never liked me at all. You just wanted my money. I stared at him open-mouthed, not knowing what to say. That's real low, Shannon. Hey, Ty, if I was you, I'd stay away from her. Unless you want to end up in debt. He walked off. Is what he said true? No. Well, yes, but it was the past. It isn't like that with you, I promise. Tyler shook his head, then said, I didn't think you were like that. 
Then he grabbed his stuff and left. This was awful. Not only had I lost all my friends, but now I'd lost the boy I truly cared for, too. After that, everyone ignored me at school. It felt horrible to know I was that unpopular, and I couldn't wait to finish school. When my graduation day finally arrived and I went up to get my certificate, suddenly, Rachel rushed up onto the stage and grabbed the mic. Hey, everyone! I think it's only fair that you all know the truth about Shannon. She uses her friend's sympathy to get money out of us. She even dated a guy just so she could make him buy her everything she wanted. Oh my god. All the teachers, students, and even my mom were staring at me. I felt like I was going to faint from shame. So I frantically pushed past everyone and raced out of there. When I got home... I locked myself away in my room and cried into my pillow. I was never leaving my room again. The shame was too much. A little later, my mom knocked on my door. Then she came into my room and perched on the edge of my bed. Honey, I'm just wondering why you did those things. I told mom everything about Florian tricking me, how I took money off my friends and used Brett. Then afterward, I took a box from under my bed opened it, and told Mum it was for her. In it was a new safety outfit for her work, as well as some new casual clothes, too. Your work outfit is already worn out, and I want you to have nice clothes. I know we aren't wealthy or anything, but you work so hard, and you deserve nice things. Sweetie, thank you, but you don't have to buy me anything. I know it's been a struggle since your dad passed away but it's never okay to play the victim to take advantage of people like that. Then she hugged me. What's done is already done. Now the only thing you can do is apologize to them all, then start a new life. Become a better person. So that whole summer, I did just that. I apologized to all of my friends, every single one of them. Well, except Tyler, as he was away all summer. <sighs> Then I went to college for a fresh start. I swear, I won't make the same mistakes again. I've learned my lesson on that one. Oh, I'm so nervous. Tyler is in the city this weekend and he's agreed to meet me. Oh my god, there he is. This is it. I finally have the chance to apologize to him. I hope he forgives me and sees how much I regret what I did. This time away from him made my feelings grow even stronger. Oh boy, I just miss him so much. He still looks at me with that soft smile and such sparkle in his eyes. I can't lose him this time. And I won't. Wish me luck. I dashed along the hallway, then skidded to a halt in front of the classroom door. Ah, I was late. Again. Miss Anderson, what's your excuse today? Morning, sir. I'm sorry, but my spaniel hit my shoes, then I tripped over a package by my front door, then my heap of a junk car wouldn't start, and... That's enough. Good God. Please sit down. Ashley already took attendance. What? So much for my perfectly crafted excuse. Mr. O'Shaughnessy totally would have let it slide, but she had to ruin it. I'm Ashley. I'm pretty. I'm perfect. Everybody likes me. Well, no one likes teacher's pets, Ashley. Think I'm being too harsh on her? <laughs> Just ask anyone about Ashley Mae Anderson. Ashley's father's a vet with a medal of valor. They even had dinner with the president at the White House. For her sweet 16, she rented out the swankiest club downtown for an entire weekend. And David Guetta DJed. Ashley dated two college boys at the same time, and when they found out, things got physical. Okay, okay, maybe not all of that was true, but who cares? Look, the main character here is me. Hi, my name's Ashley Mae Anderson. I know, what a freaky coincidence, right? But that's the only thing we had in common. Because unlike popular Ashley, I'm just a normal teen who's just minding her own business. But then she transferred here and messed up everything. This happens every time I open my locker. And they're not addressed to me, but to Ashley. Jeez, why do boys go so cuckoo bananas over that pretentious princess? I gathered that whole cluster and dumped them on Ashley's desk. 
Here's your delivery for the day. Oh, I have no use for those things. You can keep them if you want. <laughs> How snobby. I know those rumors weren't all lies. Alright, if you said so. Being mistaken for Ashley was so annoying that I did consider putting a sign on my locker or something. But I suppose sometimes it actually had its perks. Like when I accidentally knocked over a trash can in the school's parking lot. But upon knowing my name, the janitor said my father was his commanding officer back in the day and let me off. And believe it or not, these mix-ups didn't only happen at school. Once, my family went out for dinner and the staff at this restaurant thought we were the other Andersons. They must be some really important people because the super attentive waiters topped up our drinks for free and gave us complimentary desserts. Pretty sweet, right? Only when we were leaving, things almost went south when the manager shook my dad's hand and said, Thank you for your service. My dad seemed confused, but fortunately, I dragged him away before they busted us. I mean, Ashley's been enjoying these privileges her entire life, so it's fair I benefit a little from them. Especially since I have to endure being called her Walmart version. Anyway, back to me. I arrived home to find a teary-eyed girl sitting on our front porch. She must be one of Billy's exes. If your brother's a jock that all girls flock around, you'd get used to this real soon. He went through girlfriends quicker than hair gel, and he always had some peeves about them, like Mandy, too clingy, Katie, too dramatic, Maggie, too flirty. The list goes on. Then, as soon as my backpack hit the bedroom floor, my door burst open. Hey, I need your help. What? Need a hand to make up with Cry Barbie out there? She's ancient history. Check this out. Her name's Jane Brown. Ain't she a beaut? I immediately recognized her. She's the waitress that he kept eyeing the other day. Now, he needed my help to ask her out and not seem creepy. So, I suggested taking her to his friend Alexander's party this weekend. How do you know about that? Isn't that cool people exclusive? As if I wanted to. I was added to their group chat by accident because they thought I was Ashley. <laughs> right. Hot Ashley. You should come too. I'll be with Jane, but Victor will be there. Wait, I'll see my crush at that stupid party? Sign me up then. Jocks, cheerleaders, stuck-up kids. This place was packed with people like Billy. My brother briefly introduced me to the host Alexander, while Madison followed him around looking all shy and gooey-eyed. Wasn't she bothered that all Alexander seemed to care about was if anyone had seen Ashley? I also got to officially meet Jane, but the person I was looking for was Victor. He's so much more than just a cute face in the crowd. He's the peanut butter to my jelly. But before I could talk to him, a bunch of dudes popped out of nowhere. This is Ashley? Oh man, I thought she was supposed to be pretty. No offense though. She's a six if you squint hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm squinting now and you're barely even a two yourself. No offense though. What, what did, did you, you say? say? <laughs> Don't worry, you could still go after pretty girls. They just need a crate of fear first. The crowd suddenly felt silent and stared at us. This party is so lame. Peace out, losers. Anywhere is better than a stuffy elitist hellhole, but it's a bummer I didn't get to talk to Victor. He's Billy's best bro and used to come hang out at our place pretty much every day, but not anymore. Guess he's been avoiding me ever since I told him I had feelings for him. <sighs> I was going to settle things with him tonight, but those jerks ruined it. Do I need to print my own t-shirt saying, I'm Ashley, you must be looking for Ashley? The next day, while looking for Victor, I heard someone calling my name, but I turned around only to see Alexander calling for, ugh, Ashley. So annoying. I saw him make a move on her, but she said guys like him bored her, then proceeded to list all his flaws. Oof, harsh. From then on, I tried my best to avoid Ashley, and thought my life would be light and breezy. But nope. On the contrary, I found myself in a series of unfortunate events. One day, a stack of religious magazines randomly showed up on our doorstep. But the real kicker was, they were all addressed specifically to me! And there was absolutely no way to convince my family and neighbors that I wasn't a member of the Church of Scientology. Two days later, all of my clean clothes had some weird stains and holes on them. I had to beg Billy to lend me some of his. That day, I went to school in an old jersey, looking like a midget. Ugh. 
Then, this Monday, I became the center of attention by showing up with my face covered in pimple patches and band-aids. Well, that's because I woke up to countless cystic acne and didn't have enough patches. This resulted in me being called the mummy for five days straight. But the final straw was my car having two flat tires. The clock was ticking, so I asked Billy to take me to school. However, he just flat out refused, saying he'd already promised to pick Jane up. No other choice. I had to ride my old bike. When I saw Billy's car in the driveway, my pettiness got the better of me, so I splashed my half-empty milk carton over the windshield. I'm on my way. Oh my god, you little brat! Sorry, babe, you won't believe what my sister just did. Seeing Billy's reaction was chef's kiss. <laughs> you got it coming, big bro. The next day, my car was fixed, so I managed to get to school early. Looks like my string of bad luck was finally over. Okay, let's see who wants to confess to Queen Ashley today. From... Victor? Oh no, why him? I stood there, frozen with a letter in my hand, still processing the situation when a friend came and showed me something on her phone. It's a video of me singing and dancing in my room! No one's supposed to see this, ever! It had been uploaded by some throwaway account, but who else could it be but... Jesus Christ! Billy! I rushed home to see Billy and Jane cuddling in the living room. How's he still so calm after pulling that on me? I confronted him, and he didn't even bother denying it, and even said that's what I deserved for vandalizing his car. We screamed and shouted at each other, but before we ended up in a fistfight, he stopped and stumped off to his room. I was still fuming, glaring at his shadow, when I saw Jane gawping at me in delight. Don't blame your poor brother too much, dear. It was I who pulled the strings. What? Jane? But why? We'd barely even interacted. Then she went on about all of my mishaps lately were her doings. Yep, my so-called bad luck, it had been Jane all along. That's for stealing Alexander from my sister. He's her first love. Do you know how heartbroken Zoe has been? Wait, Zoe who? And why on earth would I choose to mingle with that playboy Alex? Kudos to this girl for thinking I could ever steal someone's boyfriend. Hello, I'm still struggling with my lifelong crush over here. I tried to tell her she made a mistake, but she wouldn't listen. Stop denying it. I know it's you. You're East High's Ashley with a vet dad. That checked all the boxes already. Hold up. There's another Ashley Mae Anderson in our school. She's Ashley with EY. I'm Ashley, E-I-G-H. Her dad is a war veteran. My father is a veterinarian. Oh, snap. Good lord. She devised this intricate plan, approached Billy just to make it work, and was successful for the most part. Well, apart from having the wrong person. Just amazing. Jane apologized and promised to take down the video. However, she wanted me to help her take revenge on Ashley in return. I didn't want to get involved, but I also never wanted to be on her bad side again, so I reluctantly agreed. But if you think about it, Jane's story didn't quite add up. Ashley seemed to have a holier-than-thou attitude and had dozens of admirers waiting in line. Why would she get in between them? Not to mention, Alexander's a notorious player who Ashley already ruthlessly rejected. I believe there's more to this. As expected, thanks to that video, my school life was now even more awkward than usual. But it didn't matter, as I was too preoccupied with Operation Ashley. Today's mission? Approach her after cheerleading practice. I stood in the corner, behind the bleacher, waiting for my chance. But before I showed myself, I saw Madison march over, say something to Ashley, then storm off. After that, Ashley started… sobbing? I didn't know what happened, but I felt bad for her. So I tried comforting her, but she kept brushing me off. Look, you can keep the Ice Queen act all you want, but I know you have feelings too. I thought you might have something else you want to share with me, not just the name. And it was like I pulled a lever that let out all of her bottled-up emotions, and we had a heart-to-heart -heart all afternoon. Just as I thought, things weren't what they seemed. We'd better talk this through with one another, so I set up a meeting at a cafe in the South Coast Plaza, as they wouldn't dare to cause a scene in public, right? 
Anyway, Ashley clarified that Alexander and her weren't a thing, while assuring Zoe that she deserved a guy much better than him. But Alex was really sweet to me. He gave me this present on our one-month anniversary. Did he say it's his grandmother's? Yeah, he tried giving me an identical one on my birthday. I'd say you dodged a bullet when you two broke up. Please, look at yourself first. You two flirt with boys left and right and still act all high and mighty. Get off that high horse. Ashley seemed genuinely hurt by Jane's words that it took her a while to speak up. I'm just sick and tired of being the popular girl who has to live up to everyone's expectations. It's too exhausting. I thought transferring here would mean a fresh start, but everyone still has this impression of me which I can't seem to change. The rest of us looked at each other in confusion when we saw how sad Ashley's situation actually was. We didn't know there were so many downsides to being high school popular. Ashley, you know you can just be yourself, right? The world will have to accept you for who you truly are. If people don't like you, then so be it. Yeah, if they don't, that's their problem, not yours. You can't fit into a mold to please everyone, because there's no such thing. I don't want to agree with her, but she has a point. Let the whole world know the real Ashley. And you too, Zoe. Someday, you'll find a good guy who loves you for yourself. Alright, girls, that's settled. Now, I have to deal with my own mess. Billy found out the truth and now he's been ghosting me. But I swear to God, I'm in love with this guy. Gotta go. Bye! I couldn't believe I was rooting for my saboteur and her accomplice to be together. But here I was. Go get him, tiger! The next Monday, Ashley walked to class and had lunch with me instead of Madison and her clique. And, of course, this didn't go unnoticed. You left us for her? What is she? You're not hot, sister? <laughs> Before I could clap back, Ashley stood up and unleashed her inner sass. This is me living my life as my true self. If any of you bootlickers have something to say about that, you can shove it where the sun won't shine. Sweet Mary, Jesus, and Holy Spirits! Who knew she had it in her? Her words completely decimated those hyenas. And suddenly, someone grabbed my wrist. Victor? Slow down! Where are you taking me? Besides, you got the wrong person, and also the wrong address for this. You should give it to her yourself. Actually, I sent it to the right girl, but apparently, she still hasn't opened it. Wait... What? And you're right, I should tell her myself. It's just that Billy and I made a deal that sisters are off limits, so I thought it's better to avoid you. But hearing Ashley talk about being herself made me realize that I'm sick of hiding my feelings. I'm gonna make Billy see how sincere I am for you. Before I do that, Ashley, I like you. And, um, will you go on a date with me? Yes! Um, I mean, yeah, I suppose that would be cool. This is beyond my wildest dream! Not only do I have a brand new friend, but also a date with my dream guy! Fortune is finally smiling on me. 